Mac Power Users, episode 711, Catching Up with Merlin Man. Hello, everyone. This is David Sparks. Uh, Stephen Hackett can't be here today because of podcastathon week, but I get to pick a guest. And this week, I was able to bring in Merlin Man. You know, Merlin, you were the original guest on Mac Power Users. You're one of my favorite people, and thank you so much for coming in today. The the original guest. You were, you were. I was sitting. Can, can on I the have f- like a kind of a blazer or something? I I think you deserve one. Like yeah, uh, with I, think, a crested, I, I do too. I didn't want to be a jerk about it, but I think yeah, I do I'll, I'll have to look into that. I was sitting on the floor at Mac World, and I was thinking. You know, we've been doing this show for a year, and Katie and I keep telling how we do things. Maybe people would like to hear how somebody else do something. And I saw you at the Omni Group booth on the floor. You and I didn't know. <laughs> you didn't know me from anybody. And then afterwards, I, I so remember that. I, I came so up to you that. and introduced myself, and you were so kind to come on. And you started a, a great tradition on this show of bringing on great guests. And, and I will always be thankful that you said Well, yes. thanks. I'm, really, I'm glad you're still doing it. Yeah, I love this man. This is this is how I pay for my shoes today. I mean, that's it. Well, what did you, are you happy with your shoes? I love my shoes. My shoes have never been so comfortable. I, I'm wearing. I'm wearing. I never thought. I never thought I'd be this person, David. I'm, I'm wearing Birkenstocks right now. Yeah, they're really comfortable. Yeah. Well, you're you've been in California long enough. You know, you can. Well, David, I have a lot of problems, and I I don't I don't need to be wearing shoes to impress strangers. Yeah, you can just use that if you want. Well, I, I'm. I just wear socks most of the time. In fact, oh, I this nice. is an old person problem, but I ordered socks with the little rubber things on the bottom because I kept finding myself slipping and sliding. Oh, like, like when you're getting an X-ray or something. I guess. Like, yeah, you know those little hospital socks they give yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now I got them. So when I walk around the house, I even got. I went. Th- this is a rabbit hole, but I think it's appropriate. I, after all those years, Steve, of talk- Steven's not here. He's got other stuff going on. I'll yeah, go anywhere exactly. you want to go. Yeah, I feel like he's busy. You know, the mice will play and I well, find he's out there helping people, you know, he's out yeah. there helping children and families. And like, I, it, it gets a little tiresome, Steven, like we, we, we get it. Oh, look at me. I'm giving millions of dollars to this incredibly, maybe the best charity in America. Look at me. Uh, he's curing childhood cancer, but I'm talking yeah. about the little rubber things on my socks. So, you know, it, it's well, equivalent. I'm 3d printing with wood filament. So I'm not exactly sweating it. Wait a second. You have a 3d printer. Wood filament. David, right. David, D- David Allen, uh, Rectory Sparks. I, it's thirty percent wood infused PLA plus. Well, I think we just found the topic for more power users because I just took delivery of a bamboo three D printer, and we have to talk about this. That's like the equivalent of telling me I look good in a vest. You you just made my year by agreeing to talk about this thing that literally no one is interested in but me. Uh, we we have more power users. I want to go deep on that. But okay. the sidetrack to the sidetrack is I bought a standing desk uh, treadmill. I, I've really <laughs> been working on my health lately. And so I find yeah, after well, all these Yeah, just make sure you don't break your collarbone. <laughs> yeah. It only takes a few pounds of pressure, David, even in new shoes. Did you ever see that Taylor Swift thing for Apple where she was on the uh, the treadmill and she just totally wiped out? It was super funny. It's like an ad. She's funny. She's, 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 she's funny and self-effacing. Are you in no shoes house? Uh, no, we're not. But I don't like to wear shoes around the house. So people think mm-hmm. we are. When I answer That's the so door. That's so interesting. We have the opposite. We're, we, by Fiat, my wife, who is the CEO, declared us by fiat to be a no shoes house at one point and the thing is i like to have something on my feet so i'm thinking about getting a second pair of birkenstocks you know kind of like 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 uh, i don't know like you know like mr miyazaki you know you come in you put on the slippers you know that kind of thing but i like it i like i want our support uh david i'm not i'm not the, as young as i used to be i have crocs at each door that's my oh thing. 100%. i have crocs at each door so i have the the shop I have professional crocs, crocs in yeah, the my garage. professional yeah. I have the garden Crocs in the back. And now I, I was telling Daisy, I need a pair of front door Crocs because then I show up to the front door. I want to go out and get the mail or something and I don't have Crocs. Right, right. You need something that's a little more transitional for what yeah. you need a slightly more ruggedized shoe yeah. for like if you need to go check the mail. But I got this thing. You stick under your desk and you walk on it and I can walk several miles a day while I'm answering email and whatnot. But that's the what really led to the rubber socks because I said, well, if I'm on a treadmill, I don't want to slip. 
And uh, it's been really great. So that's kind of yeah. Fun. That would be a really dumb way to die. And do yeah. you? Yeah. And and, and <laughs> It'd do be you appropriate feel like, though <laughs> for me? I think. Oh no, no. The, however way I die, I will almost. I, I was telling Syracuse uh, that I'm pretty sure. I don't know when this first occurred to me. I'm pretty sure that I will be killed by a, a flightless bird, probably a cassowary, because <laughs> they have an axe on their nose and yeah. they're very mean. You know, a swan can break your femur, and I'm I'm pretty sure that uh, I don't know if they fly, but uh, you know. The swan boats are nice. I, I worry about that though. And, and, and the thing is you don't get to pick how you die. I mean, except in fairly rare circumstances. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. You know, like, like in a, like in a, kind of like a, like in a, in a an old timey joke or something, but like, yeah, by and large, I want to avoid the things so we, we might end up, I guess, talking about this thing I do called the wisdom uh, project. And uh, one of the things I said in there is try to avoid experiences uh, that your loved ones will have to explain on a government or hospital form. That's 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 good advice. You think that's, that's good? good? No, advice. honestly, you, you you've read it. You think that's good advice? Yeah, I I jumped out of an airplane on vacation a few years ago with with the kids because they said it would be fun, and I was thinking, I don't know, mm. I, I'm not really in the best of shape to be jumping out of airplanes. But what really sold me on it was the guy who mm. I was strapped to was wearing flip flops, mm. and I'm like, oh, you know, if he does right. this enough. That that's so smart. That's like in Say Anything where Ioni Sky says, if there's no babies crying on the plane, it won't crash. Like yeah. you, you're, first of all, I love the, I just, I'm, I will always treasure uh, you giving me the phrase, the man, you're strapped to a man. I like the sound of that. It's got a nice yeah. mouth feel. Yeah. And, it's, and so he's got the shoot. So he's, he's got his flip flops. Now, you know, a lot of the rides, I know you, know you enjoy theme parks. Some of those rides, like you can't wear flip flops on them because they'll just fall off. Yeah. But you can do that when you're, when you're skydiving. Apparently he can. And I felt like if he feels comfortable enough about this wear flip-flops, I'm probably okay. And it, it turns smart. out I was. I was okay. It was was it, was it cool? It was It was fun. I mean, were you like, like the thing is, I feel like I would not black out, but like, I, 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 I don't want to be clever or cute about this, but like, I don't think I'd ever do that. You know, QED. Like, I don't want to, I see, what a, that would be a, such a dumb way for me to die, but it must be, if you can be there in that moment, and like feel what's happening it and you're not overwhelmed and blacking out it must be so thrilling i don't think it was as thrilling as you would think it, it's exciting and it's fun but you know it's like mm. looking out the you're not the, you're not really selling me on this no i i'm not really but you know the kids loved it and having that experience to them with them to me was the selling point i wouldn't have just done this on my own the, the one thing that was shocking for me was how loud it is. And I'm going to sound like an old man again, but I have tonight. Loud from like wind whistling by your ears? Yeah, it is so yeah. loud. If I had to do it over again, I would wear some ear protection. What did you guys talk about on the way down? You can't talk about anything. It's so loud. You're not wearing like helicopter or headphones or something? No, man. You're just, you're holding on and, and you're thinking, man, I hope his flip-flops don't fall off. Could you imagine if you're just somewhere in Hawaii and because, a flip-flop I mean, he's, you're falls both out gonna of the sky? You're going to have to roll. You're gonna have to be like a like a like a kind of uh, conjoined pill bug title, and yeah, you're you, just kind of yeah. stretched out. He's he's like definitely in control, and then once they mm. pop the shoot, and, you, and it, you're strapped to the man in control, is that right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. And you can mm -hmm. talk once he pops the shoot, but honestly, mm. I was just. But he doesn't like you to talk before that. Before he pops the shoot, he doesn't like you to talk. Well, you can't because you can't hear him. Hmm. But once, you once tell you they that, pop the shoot, that's true. You're, you're good. You know what? Yeah. But I mean, this is this is a this is a, it was a wholesome relationship generally, though, right? Yeah, it was great. It was great, huh. and then it brought us to a very soft landing, slid in. It was it was actually quite enjoyable. Once we the the wind stopped screaming in my ears, and you could see all of the island. It was it was it was an experience that I'm glad. Oh, I Oh, was this in Hawaii? Yes. I mean, oh, you only man. do crazy stuff like that when you go on vacation. I know. I tried shave ice. It's nuts. Shave ice is amazing. <sighs> well, it's been a good episode, David. Thank you so much for yeah, having me back. I'm you, the Merlin. original guest on this show, and <laughs> I'm always happy what I can contribute. It's too bad the 35 minutes of us talking before this will, will not be arable, uh, which I think means it, it can't be farmed for several years. Yeah, but uh, yeah. it's 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 been great to be here, and you know, keep looking at the stars. All right, for the folks that are are banging their heads on their their dashboards. Uh, where's my hot tips i yeah. want hot tips well merlin you were you're pretty good at hot tips but but the thing that you told me <laughs> <coming> <laughs> i'm not in, strapped to a parachute but i do my best yeah there you go but but you 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 wrote in the outline ios task quest <laughs> continues exclamation point <laughs> if you haven't figured it yes. out yet there's no hope for any of us that's what i've just said 
you know, what's the, what's that line from that wonderful Ted Lasso episode? Hope is the thing that kills you. <laughs> you know, that's the thing. That's the thing is like, yeah. oh, we were watching that Hulu show, uh, actually pretty well done show about, um, a fella who, who disappeared. And, uh, I was just, we just, this is not funny, but like, we're just saying like, obviously knowing that somebody whom you love has died is about as bad as it can get. But like knowing somebody's like not there is or like unknown must be just like ugh excruciating, yeah. And um, it's that again, the, the keeping that hope alive is is really killing me. I have this very very heavy thousand dollar phone, and I I don't know where to write down that I need to buy grapes. And it's it's kind of been grinding my gears a little bit. I mean, just to pick apart the entry, it says iOS task quest continues. So you're not tracking tasks at all on your mac then right it's all about on your device <laughs> oh, david you sweet summer child um okay so s- side note to the side rail to the sidebar counselor let's say about the time i got out of jury duty by telling talking about jury nullification did i ever tell you that no oh, i killed it it's amazing um is is that i feel like we do this visit together, obviously not often enough for me because I really like you and enjoy talking to you, but it's just often enough that I completely forget what we talked about previously. I, I remember something, something text files, something, something Katie wants yeah. to know about how to scan PDFs. I, but like, have <laughs> yeah. we, I feel like maybe at least twice before I've had the same well, time. I think w- the last step in our journey together, you were using text files. I think it was, um, the uh what was that app uh, task paper i believe you're using task paper to do task yes that's right mm-hmm. yeah is that still your thing i mean can we talk about this yeah because i think it's i mean as much as this is my own personal and pseudo professional itch to scratch i do feel like this gets at something that's to me anyway quite interesting about the time that in which we are living right now you know it's one thing to talk about your iPhone or your iPhone in 2008 or your iPad in 2011 or whatever. And with the latest event, I was just flipping through old photos from WWDCs and, and Mac world's past. And, uh, I had done a screenshot. I used to be kind of obsessed ironically with how many to-do list apps had a check mark somewhere on the logo. Yeah, that was I have a, a pretty, thing. I, yeah. I have a pretty funny screenshot from 2010 of a bunch of those on the store. I mean, used to be, there were no apps. And then when there were apps, you know, it could be like you add a funny mustache or you look like you're drinking a beer. And then, of course, that became the market of apps that we knew in that wonderful creative garden. And um, I, I want to credit this to John Gruber. Well, I don't want to credit anything to John Gruber, but he might have been the first one that said, you know, Twitter apps are really the playground for interesting iOS yeah. models and interactions. And I feel like in some ways, at least in our group, it really, for a time, it really felt like there was so much between Mac and iOS, so much propulsiveness to new apps for what I would generally call task management. You know what I mean? Like it's not, it's not Outlook, it's not Apple Calendar, but like you have options out there for all these different ways, and sometimes they sync together. And now today, through like a whole, this is a whole topic, but. You know, ever since Apple made it, they did that incredibly un-Apple thing of saying, hey, you know, like if you're Merlin uh, and you have over 10 pages of apps, I used to have to delete apps to see apps because I'm not a folder guy, right? And then one day they said, hey, you know how that's super annoying and our interface for this blows? Well, what if we just said, just hide all these pages? And you're like, oh, sweetheart. This is like when my mom said, clean my room and I just pushed everything under the bed. I'm fine with that. I use so many fewer apps. I use, this is, I think, Jermaine. I use Siri suggestion blocks for most of the icons on my phone because it knows me better than I do. It knows when it's time to open Google Docs, et cetera. But I'm in this funny place where like I have, uh, I'm like a Wallace Stevens poem. I have this one foot over here in the world of pre-today Mac and iOS things and then there's this other world over here where we're living a, I'm living anyway for myself, a slightly more austere life in terms of the abundance of apps that I use and continue using. And with my feet in those two worlds, it's, it's kind of frustrating to find something that works the way I want on a Mac and works the way I want on iOS. And it's that last mile 
of making it easy to do those things and having confidence in the system that leaves me feeling a little bit fraught sometimes. And I'm probably just overthinking it. I'm not busy, David. Uh, and my life is not difficult. But like, if I want grapes, I never want to have to think about, to paraphrase David Allen, I never want to have to think about grapes twice when I'm out of my mind. I just, it's, yeah, I'd, I'd love to talk about that because I think it gets at a sort of a subset of challenges that ardent power users have about fording this gap from the like, oh, you know, everything can be everything, calendar apps, do these things, to this world now where it's like, well, there's a lot more services and web things. And I don't know, I just haven't gotten there yet. And sometimes I think I found the answer in something like Obsidian. And then I'm like, oh man, I, I, it's like learning Emacs or like having to take the GRE by playing Tron. It's just, I, I don't want to get into a whole thing. I just... Hey. You don't want to go to Obsidian for task management if you're like task paper. You just saved me so much you. time, David. Yeah, it's it's great. I mean, you can build basically. Uh, it's not your it's own. not great, David. It's extraordinary. The, and I haven't I haven't read your book yet. Uh, you you kindly gifted me a copy. I haven't copy. I've not read it yet. But it's it, there's so many things you can go do in Obsidian. It is an attractive nuisance for somebody who fiddles, but those plugins are so powerful. The integrations are so powerful. And I think it's a, I, I, I feel more confident in a platform when I start noticing its icon on lots of pages. Yeah. Which uh, th that'll be meaningful to you. And I hope a lot of your users, if you go somewhere and you start seeing an icon for something, you realize, oh, you know, through stuff like, I love VS Code, which is something I never thought I would say, Visual Studio. There's so many wonderful plugins for that, all that stuff. And the fact that, you know, Obsidian is there for almost all of those. And but you still just got little skinny text files. I, yeah. I appreciate you saying that though. Well, it's it's amazing, and it's a folder full of markdown files, so you control your data. But for task management in particular, because I ran it for three months uh, when I was working on the Obsidian Field Guide, I wanted to really kind of live with it, and I was able to create most of the features I get with OmniFocus, but. It's fiddly, and you've got to you've got to manage it, yes. and it's not very good on iOS. It's really good on the Mac, I think, but on the iPhone in particular, it's not particularly good for tasks. But even just like one thing I got from a relatively deep dive over several months with Obsidian that I, I really liked and I really respect about the way the app is made is that it's neat to me how many of those plugins can operate independently. And 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 again, scratch an itch. It's neat, and your your listeners totally know what Obsidian is, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, but like, it's so neat that like, if you apply the right amount of fiddling, it'll take care of a lot of stuff for you. Uh, again, yes. there's so much stuff in VS code that is really, really powerful without being overly like onerous to learn. And, and a similarity in this case between say, a, like when I put stuff on GitHub, you know, I've got a GitHub repository that's reflected in the GitHub, GitHub desktop app. It's reflected in, you know, I've got folders for that in all the right places. It's all very easy to understand. And then VS Code kind of ties all that together. But in this instance, you take a feature from a good IDE, which is you put a, let's say you put in a comment somewhere in a document, and but, but which I just mean, whatever you consider a content. It's something that's not the content of the document per se. Often it's metadata notes to use. I love the way you can, for example, say, pull out, go to everything in this folder or this pile of folders and locate everything, the, the, every task that matches these criteria, the to-dos, the fix-me's. That stuff is, is brilliant, yeah. but that is very extremely useful for a developer and less useful for a, a podcaster with a segue. Yeah, but a power user can do beautiful things with that once they figure it out. Is data view a thing I should spend, I should spend more time with data view, right? The data view is so key to it's, stuff like it's that. It's just so neat. Like It seems like it's almost like the equivalent I'm probably saying this wrong of like a, a MySQL query, like where you go like from this with that. And you know what I mean? It's, it's so yeah. neat. I've had it like, it just pulls up a table of stuff. And I'm like, how do it know? Dynamically generates a table. Like if you, if you did project management in Obsidian, you could have data view, just pull up all active projects and index them by this. and put them in the table. <sighs> okay, here we go. I'm not shining your skirt. I'm going to read your stupid book. I'm going to write right. it down right Thank now. Read you. David's. Read, I'm writing it down. You hear it? That's my pen. I'm writing down read David's. It, it's book. not a book okay. anymore, though. It's videos. I don't do the books. I do the videos. So oh. just go check it out. Yeah. You know, I still have your iPad book on my shelf. Oh, I love that. I love that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
That's back when I- iPods ran on a FireWire cable in 220. Yeah, I mean, long, I made long a book called ago. iPad at Work when iPad really wasn't very I good. I think it, for had a, it might have had a briefcase on the cover. Yeah, it did. It did. <laughs> and a check. With icons on it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Old school. This episode of the Mac Power Users is brought to you by 1Password. Go to onepassword.com slash MPU to get 20% off your plan. With 1Password, you can go ahead and forget your passwords. Because with 1Password, you can protect yourself, your family, your global workforce with a simple security, easy collaboration, and actionable insights. The way it works is you remember 1Password and the application does the rest. This isn't just for website logins, it's for secure information, and it's also getting you that protection on the 1Password side, where they're monitoring the websites you're logging into to make sure they haven't had any security breaches that you're not aware of. If you want to protect your medical records or sensitive documents, you can do that right in 1Password. If you want to share your data with members of your team or your family, they have a secure way of sharing data, no problem. If you want to mitigate risks from the, your partners, the people that you're logging into, 1Password keeps an eye on them for you. It's almost like having your own secret agents out there protecting you. And if you're on the corporate side, they can work with all of your tools that you already trust. What you get with a 1Password subscription is the loyalty of a team of experts that do nothing but work on protecting folks' privacy on the internet. They are at your back. They make this app to make sure you're protected. For me, it's the peace of mind of knowing that this problem is solved in an ever-increasing and dangerous environment. Go check it out at onepasswordcom MPU. Like I said, whether you want an individual or a family or a business plan, they've got you covered. You can learn more about it there, and if you sign up at that link, you get 20% off. That's onepasswordcom slash MPU one last time. Thank you, 1Password, for all of your support of the Mac Power users. Okay, I want to go back to the task, though, because you and I were around on the Mac when there were no task apps. I mean, before you know, before the iPhone and, and kind of like in those days, I think, remember there was IGTD. There were like, there was just a couple like little like apps together. Then Ethan Schoonover, you know, mm-hmm. you know, kind of came in and turned Omni Outliner into a GTD Kinkless app. GTD. That's mm-hmm. it. Yeah. And then like when the iPhone showed up and there were so many uh, task apps, I think for a lot of us, it was like, this is amazing because we lived in the desert for so long and now there's water everywhere. It was very <laughs> tempting to try them all. I, I get it. I was there. But I was thinking it was, for you. It was kind of exciting. And there was that guy in Poland. There was that one app that was like lapping. We've talked about this before, I think. It was like lapping everybody else, including OmniFocus. He was like shipping new features every day. And then one day the guy just disappeared. Yeah. And I don't know if you remember this. I, I, it might have been IGTD, but it was one of those early apps. And it was one of those ones where people were like, it was like talking to your friend who uses like Debian or something. And you're like, yeah. oh, you don't have a way to do that? You don't have the w- a way to put this onto your Linux phone? And it's like, oh. But like it was, it was exciting. But that sometimes an app, if it's an app that's doing something you care a lot about, um, you have to really, you have to really jibe with the taste, the approach, the um, I don't know what you would call it, maybe the UI model of those things. And like there are things that are, there are apps that are basically like the shark. Uh, cathedral that to me are pretty much unusable because everything takes three clicks. <laughs> yeah. And, and being somebody who loves something on a Mac, I, I, I would all tend to like all day long. I'm on a Mac for better, or for worse, for work or whatever, for any of that stuff I'm on a Mac. So, but the way that you interact with a Mac, even if it's like one of those iPad apps that works on a Mac, like it, a click does not always mean a click. And and just to get this out of the way, why am I still a text files guy? Well, dude, I've tried to like really go all in on reminders at one point. And I use that app Federico talks about maybe good task that is yeah. like a, how would you describe good task? It's, it's, it's like, it like takes what they built on, on top. top of reminders yeah. Yeah. and adds more functionality. But David, I'm, I'm such a weirdo that like, you got to remember, I come from the world of Quicksilver and text files. Yep. I'm used to having a custom key command that's like a tap, a type, and enter. 
I don't even need to look at the screen, okay? Tap, type, enter. And what happened? Well, anything. In that case, you know what I used to do? I had Quicksilver things for appending to a document. If I wanted to, why would I need to open a document if I know I just want to throw something into it? I don't need to sort my trash every time I throw out a paper towel. You know, it's like this reverse Kleenex box. Yeah. And that that is so powerful to me that even when I go to reminders, I'm like, if I want to write down, and you don't say grapes, as you know, David, you say buy grapes or you say order grapes. There needs to be a verb in there. Yeah. But like, even the like, even with widgets, even with all that stuff, I still feel like it's three or four clicks just to write something down. Is is S I R I the answer? Almost kind of sometimes, eventually, maybe. All, all I really want in this world, I don't know who will make this. We talked about this for six months on on uh, another show I do called Do By Friday. I initially called it the bike log, but yeah. now I I, I want to just call the app something like capture or this or here. I want to yell into the air. I want that to go into whatever it is. It could be JSON. It could be a table. I don't care. I want to yell into the air and I want what I, the string that I said, if I say, Hey, you know, catch this. I want that to go into a line with a date stamp, uh, geolocation, maybe the weather. And I just want a way to yell into the air without having to talk to anything with any more than just, just do this thing. Like if, if I'm in the middle, if I'm doing something with my, I'm painting a miniature and I've got on those orange nitrile gloves, I just want to yell out, buy grapes, have it go into that general inbox, and then I'll get back to it later. But guess what? If that becomes JSON, that becomes HTML, that becomes CSV, I also now have a log for my life. That however I have choose to use the yell into the air app, I decide what to do with that inbox. Do I need an overly complex inbox to do GTD? No, you don't. You need literally an inbox. It's your job to sift through that inbox later. But you can have total confidence that when you yell into the air, it goes somewhere. That's the dumb thing I want. So I end up using reminders with Siri because it's pretty dependable. But you know what Siri doesn't tell me that's mental? When was that note created? Where was that note created? Right? So yeah. that, that that's kind of what I'm looking for. I And I don't need the... That wonderful world word that uh, Ethan used to use. I really don't need the all of the scaffolding anymore. That OmniFocus and similar things, things has come so far too. I don't need that scaffolding anymore. I have a very easy, repeatable thing, and the things that are a something that pops up, like I need to go order more tongue oil, you know, for staining my my figures because <laughs> I'm a busy businessman. Um, I don't want to have to think about where that goes. Find the app, go in, tag it, all that stuff. Like yeah. these are different things for me. It's, I think I said this here a long time ago. I think a task list uh, should be a pocket, not an attic. And I, I just want a place to like have things go and have it be low friction. And if entering it in reminders and having to interact and click in all their invisible fields to get it to go, that's resistance that I don't need for grapes. I think yelling into the air and making it show up on a list, I don't think there's anything better than reminders for that. But then if you, but then that the clouds up your list. Like if you're yeah. using it, like to me, reminders is I'm using it for its titular reason, which is, Hey Dingus, it's something as simple. I also do this a lot with my Google home hub or whatever it's called this week, but I'll, I'll say, I'll yell it into the air. Hey Dingus. Uh, especially if it's after bedtime and like I have do not disturb on, I'll say, Hey Dingus, set a nine minute pasta alarm as against a reminder, but I don't want my reminders list. My, my, my reminders list is already 10% unusable because of what it thought I said, which, you know, whatever, it's probably my fault, but you know, I like the idea of reminders being a place for reminders. And as you know, David, when you start putting garbage on your desk, when you start putting garbage into your crisper, when you start putting garbage onto your dinner table, those things no longer are useful for their original purpose. You don't trust it anymore. And that's, that's, that's where I struggle. I have and, a suggestion right now, the biggest, for you. Oh, please, David. If you were willing to go down the rabbit hole on Obsidian to set up a task manager, why don't you use that energy to set one up with drafts where you could create a new entry, it could log, I think it could log location, it could certainly log date and time. Drafts has, drafts has, a thousand and I, I use drafts it's my most used app right yeah. you know that right and like i was talking yeah. to greg last night and sending me, yeah well i'm at 16k right now 
yeah. um, 16K drafts. And people are like, well, oh, how do you manage all that? And I'm like, I don't. <laughs> Why would I manage that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's like managing used matches with all respect. You know, at the moment you need fire, a match is the most important thing in the world. But once you've achieved a flame, it's just a broken piece of wood. It's just dirty wood title, right? And like, so for me, I don't do a lot of stuff with tagging. I love that Greg makes that easy. It's all so powerful. The only place where drafts falls down, and this is just because of my dumb brain, is I like using the Task Paper app on a Mac. And sometimes the interaction model for a Task Paper syntax feels a little weird to me on a phone, personally. Well, it's carrying a lot of weight. Now, now if you're if you're if you're you're helping me, right? I just hired you. I'm paying you the big bucks, and you're going to advise me. Do I start with? I mean, my my thing, just for what it's worth, it tends to be like I try to actually almost write a spec for myself, by which I merely mean like five bullets about why the existing world is problematic. So, like, what is it I don't have now that I think I want? And the think part does a lot of the work there because I'll discover that. Come four or five bullets. Drafts does everything I could dream of and more and more and more. The two-ish problems is that, A, there are so many options for doing all of those different things in drafts. Um, well, and I'm going to tell you how thing, to do that, too. Just just make five, three or four lists. You know, Make the list personal, work, whatever. Mm, save really? the URL. You can Because in drafts, you can have it. Save a specific URL. Mm-hmm. And then make I a draft. I think I smell a shortcut coming. This, make a drafts action or a shortcut. But you can do it with a drafts action, too. Where this is going to cost me a lot, Dave. Like, no, how much are we talking about here? No, no. I mean, this. Let's be honest. Like, you're not making the big bucks in court anymore. Are you, are you going to really soak me for this advice? Be honest. Yeah, I mean, pink slips is what we agreed, right? I mean, totally fair. You saying yeah. we're a quarter mile, quarter mile? Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. We'll, we'll get all modesto on this. <laughs> but yeah, uh, but I mean, it wouldn't take that long to set up. Like real, real talk though. Sort of- you're saying. You're saying, and so something, and so, so I've played like with the hipster want, want PDA Rose. in digital form. Just make a couple did, cards. Rose did a set of actions. Dr. Drang has some actions. I should probably go back to the directory and catch up on that, huh? Because I no, understand. Yeah. And like, let me just, let me just state the thing here. I am so, I love drafts. I mean, like I, I would like almost nothing. I would like my kid to not getting, get an eating disorder and make it through college before I'm killed by a flightless bird. That's that's on me. That's selfish. But no, I would like more than anything is like to use the app that I adore the most more for this, which in part would mean that on the Mac, like all that, I would I want all that stuff to work the way it does in task paper. I want an at done with paren date. I want all, I, I don't, maybe don't need it, but I do want it. I think all that date stuff, like the yelling to the airlog, I think in a few years, it's going to seem wild to us that we never had stuff like that all along. The like basically hit running t- <laughs> from the command line, running tail on your life. Like just go into my yeah. log and show me like, and I know people in Emacs with like um, org mode or whatever do stuff like this. And so, so where do I, where, you're saying start, let's well, so, so, start, make it, make a draft. Uh, we should make some drafts offline. that serve as, as static lists that you can so you can you can make a shortcut that just opens that url so you could have it very easily available to you Mm -hmm. and then you make an append action in draft so you say okay go buy grapes and it just adds on (laughs) to the personal list and the trick to this would not to be to not to have too many of them i mean i think you'd want to keep a rational number of them i think i honestly would be fine with i mean like i don't even honestly seriously it's three times a month context become very important for me for, yeah. for for completely different reasons that I'm sure you could understand. Like, let's say, for example, your family decides to go to Disney World in Orlando. Well, that's, uh, uh, and I know I'm just saying this because you might have new listeners. You and I both know what that is. Well, is it a project? Yeah, it's a project, but you know, really that's a project of projects and that's going to involve my packing list template. That's going to yeah. involve, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. And there, you know, there's ways to roll all that stuff out. I mean, a lot of the time, it's it's just the if if I get more than one screen of tasks on a Mac, which is very very rare, thank God, um, it becomes very valuable to me to use filters. As rarely as I use them, they are given that this is literally a text file. The app is providing so much functionality for wrangling that text file. I mean, in the same way that like a database is a text file too. It's just that yeah. what the database software does with that text file is extraordinary. 
right? Um, I mean, it's all it's a binary or a text file. I don't think there's a third thing in Unix that made me love. But like, uh, I, I, you know what? I should do this, shouldn't I? Tell me, I should do this. Yeah, just use your nerd powers. Like you were willing to throw time at Obsidian for tasks, which for a lot of people makes sense, but I don't think it makes sense for you. But I feel like you could, in an afternoon, you could probably put together something very useful. Great. So now I got to read I gotta, what I have. I got to read David's stupid book and I got to do drafts. Well, you know well, what do the, neat do with, the drafts um, thing first. I think that's where you need the help, right? You want to get your I appreciate that. I'm going to, I'm going to probably give you, give you a pretty good tip and a rating, uh, rating and review on that drafts task. Yeah. Um, the, the other thing that of course is to just mitigate against, you know, fiddling. You know, the thing yeah. I did, I'll just, I, I don't, you, know, you don't talk about this all day, but Obsidian started as a, a challenge on do by Friday. It's a show I do where the yeah. MacGuffin, the conceit is that you, the, the hosts do a challenge, which sometimes is like watch jury duty. We should watch jury duty. It's really good. But, um, in that case it was use Obsidian and I instantly grokked. I mean, this goes way back to things like in sticky yeah. or sticky or stick it or all yeah. those different kind of wiki start or for that matter, media wiki. I was yeah. using media wiki on my Mac before anybody knew what Wikipedia was. Yeah. Right. Uh, that stuff is fantastic. It, it can also really turn into a rabbit hutch. Um, but what I, you know what I did, uh, my, for my real, my only real, real project so far, apart from fiddling is I created something I called, and this is personal, it's a personal as in not public, uh, uh, facing, but I created something I called the anxiety wiki, which is a place to interrogate, explore and ameliorate my struggles with various aspects of anxiety and treating that like a wiki and locating what, you know, Christopher Alexander calls patterns. Like these are things that tend to work. These are, these are anti-patterns, meaning that they're things that seem like they work, but tend not to work. Yeah. Documenting all that, giving examples of that, talking about the process of how I've learned how to fall asleep in a way that's less stressful for me. David, Obsidian was so good for that. And things like data view would make it so easy to like get a bird's eye view into yeah, what was in here. Things. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you're using Obsidian for that? I haven't used it in a while, but at Parent Teacher Night the other night, I was, I was losing my gosh dang mind about <laughs> two two days ago two days ago i was losing my mind about this ios task thing um I, because you, you know, know i do something similar with obsidian even though i made the obsidian field guide and everybody's like oh you must use obsidian for everything well i have tried everything in it but to be honest there are certain <laughs> things that i think normal apps that focus on that thing are better at um but what i do find obsidian really useful for i call it sparky os because i'm a nerd but what are my thoughts on anything? Anything that's important to me? I mean, like I've yeah, got, it's like a personal knowledge manner for your yes, uh, like, like PKM. It's but it's a PKM for your interior world. Yes, like what are my thoughts on charity? What are my thoughts? I, if I, I if I open it up right now, there's but it makes it really do, hard do you use to like share daily that. notes and stuff like that. No, hmm. no, but but hmm. I every time I read a book and I it revises what I think about something. Or every time I rethink something, I go and, but the, the difference is, and the listeners have heard me talk about this, but I feel like documenting it, your thoughts on something makes it's the world of difference. Like you think, you know, I totally agree. what you think about a topic, but when you have to write it down, when you got to do the work and justify it. And keep pursuing, suddenly, keep pursuing, you know, there's that phrase we used to use the, um, what do they call it? The five whys or the seven whys or whatever. Yeah. Like, I, I know that's a well-known douchebag thing but it's really useful to keep pursuing and pushing yourself gently but firmly on like no is that the thing or is that just the thing that i see is that the thing that i worry about is that the thing i fear or what underlies that and if you press yourself just a little bit further with that there's also that term i am sure you know called rubber ducking which is a, a phrase an old phrase from developers which is like if you're having a problem and you don't know what to do about it you have a rubber duck on your desk and explain it to the duck and there's something so elemental about, I don't love that phrase, force yourself. I like to say find yourself, but to force yourself to talk to your version of a rubber duck and explain your problem. The way I would phrase it and the way I have phrased it is like when I'm, when I'm about to bug John Syracuse about why I keep getting logged out of iMessages on Sonoma before I, because I, I try to be sparing and asking Squid, Squidward for tech support, you know? He's got yeah. a lot of problems. So, but, so what I'll do is I'll open up, guess what I open up? I open up drafts and I act like I'm writing an email to John. 
And every sentence I write, because I am, like it or not, a writer, every sentence I force myself to get leaner and leaner about what it is I'm really trying to ask. And guess what? You start discovering things. You start discovering, for example, the X, Y problem. You think you want help with X, but you really want a solution involving Y. So don't tell Comcast the wrong thing because you think you're smart. Say it in words. Give it to them in pigs and bunnies. Do that with yourself. And for me, opening up drafts and acting like I'm my rubber duck in this case, Syracuse is my duck title. Yeah. Um, that, you know what I mean? Like I, 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 and then you discover, and again, I've talked about this in the document, the project, you will so often realize, if you're lucky on a surface level, you'll find your quote answer to the problem, which is great. And you go, oh, it wasn't plugged in, right? Or the equivalent of that or whatever. You go, oh, of course. That's because there's this corrupted P list file that I forgot to delete or what, whatever, whatever that is. But, but, but David, in terms of growth and the path and the practice of life, a deeper thing you learn is which things in life you can fix. And that sounds like really up in the clouds, granola stuff. But if you sit down and rubber duck your way through drafts, you will perhaps realize whether or not this is a problem you can solve. And if you need proof of why this is valuable, there are a lot of people who tried to fix their own breaks or diagnose their own lumps. And what they didn't realize is as confident as they were in their own answer, they skipped several middle steps about learning whether that's a question that they should even try to answer themselves. Yeah. And learning who you are, a big part of learning who you are is getting more honest and gentle with yourself about what kind of stuff you can solve. But then it also, here's your tip, ready for your hot tech tip? It makes you more efficient. It makes you more effective. It makes you sometimes a little more principled to take the time to figure out whether this is something I can do on my own. Have I figured out what the problem is? And then when you do, quote, fix the problem, ask yourself, can I demonstrate that the thing that changed is a result of A, me figuring out what was wrong, and then B, what specific solution caused it to get less bad? If you can't do that, you just got lucky, which is fine, but that's different. This is, you know, you learn a lot when you write things down. Yeah. And whatever, whether you do it with a piece of paper or drafts or obsidian or whatever, but uh, obsidian for me works because I can link them together very easily and it does give me additional insight, but that's what I use obsidian for. And, and people are shocked. Well, why aren't you running your tasks and everything? Well, you know, I think there's better tools for it. One, one last thing before we finish the t- discussion on tasks. I've had a, a change in my system and I wanted to share it with you. Is, Please. Uh, a year or two ago, I bought these note cards from this guy at Ugmunk. He was a guest. On I'm, the you sent me a photo that is very interesting to me. Yes, I uh, I really like this. And, you know, you were the guy that did the hipster PDA back in the day. And uh, so I still use OmniFocus. I actually, after I quit being a lawyer, I tried to find a replacement and didn't find anything that really worked for me. But right. I combine it with these note cards. So to me, OmniFocus... What? what is that? Is that an X-Wing fighter? What's in the uh, background? Yes, you, you recognize it. I just got the, it's a- um, uh, Are the S-foils up? I can't tell. Uh, yeah, huh. it's a, a Ralph McQuarrie concept art that somebody turned into oh, a desk. God, I love Ralph McQuarrie. Mike Hurley sent me the link and I'm like, you know me, Mike. You know me so well. I'll send you a link. I'll put it in the show notes. This is this is really powerful though, because you've got this, and this is something I, uh, and have you shared this with your listeners before, what, what you're using here? Uh, we've talked about it in the Max Market Labs. I don't know if it's come up on the on Mac Power users, mm-hmm. but but you reduce it to cards. So I literally I check it off in OmniFocus. OmniFocus I kind of think of as like the bank. You know, it's holding all of the all of the things. But then mm. when I get down, oh, so in this to, instance, I was saying wallet versus attic. But in your example, maybe kind of it's wallet versus certificate of deposit versus yeah. treasury bill versus right. Like it's yeah. all related to money but it's not all the same thing or the same place or the same purpose or the same liquidity. Yeah. And so Sunday night I open up OmniFocus. I pull out the tasks for the week. I make seven cards. Is that your daily review day or your weekly review day? Yeah. And then Mm -hmm. there's seven cards, one for each day and they've all got stuff written on them. I use pencil because sometimes I erase one and then I move them. If I don't get it done, it doesn't go back in OmniFocus. It just gets moved to the next day. And if I get to Sunday and there's an unfinished, task on a card then i have to figure out what to do but in general delete it david You'll never operationally do through the week i've got index <laughs> cards you know 
It's a, such a powerful idea, and uh, you're kind to mention the hipster PDA idea. The hipster PDA was just a, an idea that sprung out of necessity in the early 2000s, well, to me necessity, which is that, you know, you and I have hung out on a variety of occasions. Uh, here's a funny thing, Dave. You know, earlier, did you notice that earlier I asked you where in your Google Doc I should drop in links, right? Yeah. Why would I ask that? Because I know there's going to be links. There's always links when yeah. I'm involved. Because I'm going to mention something, and yeah. then I'll go like, oh, we'll put in notes. And like, thankfully, Descript now saves my butt with that all the time, helping me find all the things I promised people I would do. But, you know, step zero is realizing there's a place where something goes, right? And I know right. this is old. Maybe there's some new listeners. But, you know, you're, you don't put your cutlery, at, again, back to that analogy, you don't put your cutlery in the attic just because you have more room up there. That wouldn't be useful. You need the things where you need them. They need to be, I don't know, kitchens can be such a lively metaphor for the ways we screw up in life. And like for me, this idea of like, I, if I meet somebody and I, you know, my wife, before we had a kid, my wife and I would go to rock and roll shows. We had a very lively social life. And I would invariably say, oh my God, have you heard this new Bell and Sebastian album? And they're like, who's Bell and Sebastian? I'm like, well, hang on. And I would pull out, I grab an index card, and I had a space pen, it's true. And write down Bell and Sebastian, you know, uh, whatever, star, Stars of Track and Field or whatever, right? That also gives me a chance if they have something, because then I'll say to that person, well, you got a music suggestion for me and they can write it down and give it to me. And a pile of like 10 or 15 index cards held together with a binder clip became a strangely powerful metaphor for me because every index card Every three by five card is its own world of possibility. You, it's, it's so lightweight. They're inexpensive. You know, they're easy to deal with. They're atomic. And, and at any point you could grab a stack of 200 more and start making like the equivalent of like a mind map in front of you. It's a, it's a wildly powerful idea. And that became a joke, which was at the time, you know, personal digital assistants like Trio, Palm Pilot, windows mobile or whatever and i i thought it was funny because it was in my hip pocket so it was called the hipster pda and that idea still works for me you know what i <laughs> used to do though is i i would have i would put a card and this is how dumb i am david and this is how addled with dopamine problems my pipes are is that if i was feeling especially sort of flustered i would write down on an index card the one thing that I'm going to do tomorrow morning and I'm going to do first. What, don't yep. you have 50 things to do? No, you always have one thing to do. There's no such thing as 50 things to do. I hate to get all Yoda on you, but look, you show me how many days you did 50 good things. Tomorrow, dude, do one good thing. You write it on a card. You know what you do? You put it on the seat, your chair at the desk. And when you walk in the next day, you pick up that index card and you've just given yourself an assignment for the day. If you get that done, you can start looking at those other 49 things. There's something so powerful about the only thing I have to think about right now is what's on this card. I don't need to maintain a system. I don't need to, I'm not, I'm not dragging. I don't need to, you know, update plugins. In my case, if I need to pick up a prescription at Walgreens, I write my, my segue. I'm not going to rent a car for that. All I need is, is the wallet of transportation. And I, this is so appealing to me. Yeah. I mean, and like when I get, sometimes I get like a, a project that just needs to get work done on it. Like when I was finishing that last field guide, I had a couple cards with just a running task list. I didn't, that stuff never even landed in OmniFocus. And I just, cause I work at my desk. So it's not like I need to really move And you know yourself, it. right? Don't you feel like you kind yeah. of, in some sense, know yourself, yeah. like, you know, you know, and, and this, again, this is a callback to many years ago that, but a situation you and I have discussed that you and I very much know about Something I first became very aware of as a project manager, right? So I was not a good project manager. I would even say I was a pretty bad project manager, but I learned a lot. And I was basically thrown into the deep end of a career I'd never expected because of the dot-com bust in part. Um, and also the fact that I have a very disordered mind. But I ended up doing project manager. I started out as a web designer or developer designer who did a little bit of well, remember the day back in the day when we say webmaster and the thing yeah. about webmaster yeah. that didn't get yeah. enough credit is you don't hear that anymore do you you don't but but that's because there was one person and usually yeah. a guy with who'd seen the movie alien many times but you you <laughs> <Director's> <laughs> might have cut, a nostromo yeah <laughs> an nostromo on his uh his uh um in his race car bed that hit with a standing desk um the no no but like 
the part of webmaster that gets lost. Well, what do you know about webmaster? The two things most people know who like know a little bit about this will remember from the '90s was well, um, you could say they're a designer, but really there's the, the, it's the H HTML person, you know. Netscape navigators come along. Eventually, Mozilla comes along, and you need to have somebody who knows how to turn these things into HTML for the website and make sure the links aren't broken. Second part, usually the person, the development part was in my time, what? JavaScript was a very new idea. JavaScript back then was basically a countdown clock, a Super Bowl countdown clock. You know what it was with CGI bin? And it was the John Syracuse's who write .pl files that let you do forms in a secure way, hopefully. The third part of that that very few people talked about was project management. And, and, and being the go-between, you know, between very disparate groups of people where sometimes you ended up having to be the person who threatens to cut the baby in half yeah. And force these two people, like you, you're the interlocutor between these people, two people that are, you know what I'm talking about? Two people who are way more powerful than you. And you end up having to pick up a little bit of project management to survive. So back then, at the time I became a project manager, I was using like Yahoo Calendar because I had to like schedule phone calls from people on different con continents, like a director at, you know, American Airlines would have to talk to somebody in China and I'd have to, it was so difficult to do. And that's where that became the basis. Well, most importantly, arguably that became the basis for me realizing how bad I was at a lot of this. And that led me to GTD, pretty big deal. But the project management part of this, we've, but when we were talking before we started recording, didn't project management in some way or another, the people in our lives, things we've done, it comes up over and over and over. Because most people don't realize project management exists. They don't care that it exists. And because you are essentially the information janitor, nobody notices the toilets are working until the day they don't. And that's the day you go yell at the person, who's the project manager on this? Yep. And you're like, yeah, well, I'm also that person who said you probably should have like spent a little more at this point in the process and not allow changes after this date. But you, you only wake me for the important meetings. And that, but that ability to be able to focus very heavily on the thing that needs to be done right now to the exclusion of other things is such a gift. And there's something special still about an index card. An index card, like I say, you don't need to update the plugins. You know, you don't need to, you know, reboot your watch. You just, everything you need is right there and everything you don't need is everywhere but there. And, and that's, that's still a powerful idea. Yeah. Uh, well, on the project management note, I feel like one of the jobs of a project manager is to be Switzerland because you do have disparate interests that you have to balance and try or at least to be things. Varys from yeah. game of thrones we're yeah. like yes absolutely switzerland is what you want everybody to think you are but really you want your little birds Let, is that name Varys? <laughs> yeah. you want yeah. your little birds except yeah. in that last season they did that guy dirt in the last season yeah. love that character um but your little birds are out there and they're bringing you information and you go and sit on the small council with, with your hands in your sleeves and, you know, everybody respects you and is scared of you because that's kind of, he's in some ways like one aspect of what a project manager does. Like a project manager who's really like a manager, like sort of like what my wife does where she has a staff. You have to go in there and, and be Switzerland or Varus on a given day. This episode of the Mac Power Users is brought to you by Text Expander, the original sponsor of the Mac Power Users and one of my very favorite automation tools. We talk about a lot of geeky stuff on this show, but I will tell you something that everybody can use is text automation because we all spend our time typing. And anytime you type the same thing more than once, well, you've wasted time. And you can automate that so easily with our sponsor, Text Expander. Text replacement has been on computers as long as there's been computers, but Text Expander is the company that took that idea and ran with it. Not only does Text Expander do text replacement, it takes it to an entirely new level. For instance, with Text Expander, you can have it insert the contents of your clipboard in your expansion snippet. So if you copied something from one email and you reply, it can just drop that clipboard right into the middle of your snippet. It can also adjust the position of the cursor if you want to do additional work on it after you do the expansion. It can do things like fill-in fields, so you can have it type in the name of the person that you're sending the email to and the name of the product you're writing about. And when you get an extensive text expansion library, 
Text Expander has a way to categorize it. And it even has a way to search all your snippets with one keystroke. So if you know you have the right snippet already written, but just can't remember how to trigger it, you can get there with one keystroke. If you want to go down the rabbit hole even further, you can write Apple scripts and all sorts of automations to make it do even more for you. It really is the Swiss army knife of text automation on your device. And they're on all the major platforms. They've got you covered on your Mac, on a Windows, iPhone, iPad. So wherever you need to do your automation, Text Expander is there for you. Whether you're using it for just yourself or your entire company, Text Expander has solutions for you. If you're not using it, frankly, you should. It's just such a powerful text automation tool. It's easy to get started with, and it immediately starts saving you time. I've heard from so many listeners over the years that decided to give it a try, and it changed their lives in terms of text automation. So go check it out at textexpander.com slash MPU. If you go to that link, textexpander.com slash MPU, you get 20% off your subscription, which saves you money and makes us look good. So go check it out, textexpander.com slash MPU. And thank you, Text Expander, for all of your support of the Mac Power users. All right, last question on task managers. I'm sorry. David, why do you have me do this? is a terrible idea. No, it's, it's awesome. It's great. No, you always give me good ideas. I love talking to you. But the, uh, have you considered similar. field notes? Like, just put a field notes in your pocket and forget about the well, iPhone. It's funny you should say that. I actually, right in front of me right now, the most, um, one of the most en- enduring <laughs> additions in a, in a pretty long time is... And, you know, people love their gear. Write this down, David. David, uh, there's a company that makes notebooks. I think they're from in Japan. It's called, it's a Greek name, Nemosyne, M-N-E-M-O-S-Y-N-E, uh, Model 105. And you know what it is, uh, David? It's pretty cool. It's something they call, and, and, let me get this right. Let me look it up. I don't, I don't speak Japanese. It's called a notebook, a, 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 a notebook. And this thing lives, I'm sending you a photo. This thing lives right here to my right. And it is a spiral bound. None of this really matters. But what matters is the spiral bound matters because it lays really flat and doesn't take up a lot of space. Yeah. I flip it over. Um, I said to my, before my baby understood words, I said to my baby, we don't have a lot of money pound for pound, but we're, but we'll always try to find a budget for books and art supplies. Because I, I want to always, I want you to feel like books and art supplies are something you can always have around. And for me, like, I don't own a car. Like, I don't take big vacations. I can afford to be promiscuous with index cards and notebooks. That, yeah. that's, that's my Tesla, is these, these notebooks. They're not costly. But that means you must have no trepidation. The problem with those wonderful Moleskina notebooks is the trepidation I feel about not being worthy of what goes in that book and and so, but for me all day long, and um, did we ever talk about my task someday? Let's talk about my task paper. I have to tell you about the way, I told you about the way I name tags and task paper, right? It's really smart. Let's go there. So, you know, contexts or tags. Yeah. Right? So yeah. like, and I think they try to be somewhat, you know, careful about that, but um, did Jesse invent task paper, the format? I don't even know. I think he did, but I don't know that. I don't yeah, know that task for paper sure. is just a t- that we've been I mean, talking about. It's called about task paper format, and it's his app, task paper. So I, we've been I this thing we've been talking about for for four hours is uh, <laughs> the way that I manage tasks. Or I mean, by say manage tasks, I, I despise that word. It's like managing recycling, but it, the way that I deal with my tasks is a text file, and there's three kinds of things. There's I think three and almost only three things in a task paper file. If you've ever used Markdown. Think in terms of Markdown. Think about the subset of HTML tags that exist in Markdown, the ones that you really need, that you want to be able to make fast. In task paper, it's either a project, a task, or a note. That's it. Like a project ends with a line that ends with a colon. This is basic stuff. Like this, making something in ta- for task paper or to do task paper would be a pretty good, like week, week six, um, assignment for somebody in a computer class yeah because basically all you got to know is that a line if a line ends with a colon that's a project if the line begins with a dash and a space that's a task if the line begins with nothing it's a note tasks can also then you know in a kind of superset of this the bigger set of these features you can have things like you know contexts or tags if you like so what are contexts and tags 
most people have like <laughs> um work at home well yes merlin man i'm gonna say well dude work and home are not are not contexts those are areas of responsibility you know <laughs> house and office are contexts yeah this is such a valuable distinction to me my my house is a building where my family lives um my home is is how i i try to conduct myself mindfully on earth and um work is what i do for my vocation but the office is the building where i also print my 3d figures so then what do you do you want this to be fast quick version all of my task paper tags or contacts you know pre preceded by a well, not a pilcrow. What's that called? Amp, like, you know, a little A, the at symbol. Each one is alphabetically unique, which took a little doing. But that means I only have to type two characters for it to autofill. So what does that mean? Um, let's take an easy one. If I need to write something, do I use W? Nope, because W is already used for waiting on, W-O. Um, yeah. You know, I, I use draft. Draft means right draft d is draft b is buy online well why not order no nope. because what's what's o o is office h is house e is errands it sounds so dumb i cannot even begin i can't even guess how many keystrokes i've saved over my life by thinking about that stuff just a little bit and then operationalizing it and you know what now that's consistent every single place that i use it I, I know I know what I'm doing with all of those things. And it really, it becomes um, muscle memory. You know, it's just, I mean, this I is so on brand like, for do you. you. Have to, do you have to like think about where the return key is? Exactly. No? Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. And the stuff you've talked about in the past, uh, Quicksilver, you know, the same thing, Quicksilver actions. Oh, it just gets get, in your bones. Or for me, yeah. like commands, command, like um, obviously this differs hugely for everybody. But, you know, for me, uh, command space bar for launch bar or double click control, 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 you know, for me, yeah. option, option sends the selection to launch bar. So I don't even, I don't have, I, I'm typing only a meta key. I type a meta key twice. So if I've got a shipment coming from someplace and I've got a tracking number, David, my new CPAP um, supplies arrived today. So what do I do? I select that string and then I just hit option, option. So that sends it to launch bar. Then all I have to do is, is type DEL for the sort of verb, send this to, you know, deliveries. Yeah. And it does that. And it gets, it gets into your bones. And I think you and I have talked about this in the past about Quicksilver. I mean, sitting down, it would be like Glenn Gould sitting down at a computer, but it's actually a, a it look, it's a bass guitar. Like if I sit down at a computer and don't have launch bar, I'm useless. If, if the caps lock has not been mapped to, to, um, hyper key. Yeah. Control. Yeah. 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 Right. Hyper key. Listen to you. You invented that, right? That's you. No. Terpstra did. I think Terpstra. Terpstra? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. He's a good guy. And it's, and we, but here, maybe this is the, the coda or the epilogue is that it takes, it takes an expansiveness and curiosity to get better at this stuff, but it also takes, I'm not even going to say discipline. I, I don't love that word. It takes a self-awareness about catching yourself before you start falling down the rabbit hole and then knowing when to iterate. You know, we're, we're all kind of building this railroad as we conduct the engine, but we also have to know when to be able to disappear into our work and not have to think about all those things. How, how do I get to where I can disappear into what I'm doing and not feel constantly set upon and, busy with all this stuff i can't do anything about right now and that's that's something i took away from gtd that i will treasure till the day i die yeah i do think that is a challenge for people right because mm -hmm. we're we're a little nerdy we're like wow i could make this better and more efficient but right now i need to do the thing and being able to have a, a way to set it aside and say well later i'm gonna make time to explore mm -hmm. that further but right Can I get now a hot tip for that Hot tip? Yeah, yeah, please. Hot tech tip. This is from something I first mentioned in the very early days of the back to work program. But you know, that, that phrase mindfulness, it gets really abused. And but like another way to think about it is not, this, a, not self, as much as Zen, but yeah, I'll agree. Well, like chocolate, you mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's come to our Zen spa. <laughs> Everything's in papyrus, set in papyrus. Yeah. Um, 
so, you know, as always, sort of, I always have a step zero. Like, before I can change all these things about my life, well, I have to know that there's something that's to, to watch out for. And if you catch yourself, use your phrase, whatever you like. We, we, we beat up on rabbits so often. Chase two rabbits, you know, you lose both. Rabbit hutch, rabbit hole. The poor rabbits have done nothing. But if you find yourself disappearing into like, well, maybe this is the day. I just watched a video um, Jamie, Jamie Phelps sent me about options for sort of like PKM text editor things. It was really, really good. But I'm like, oh, I'm not going to learn this new Vim. I'm not going to learn this, this Emacs setup. I'm not even going to learn my quo notes or whatever it's called. When I catch myself and I notice, you know, I'm not doing the thing. I'm supposed to be doing the thing. And I know what the thing is. You know what the thing is. You know what the thing is right now? Well, you, yeah, you do. In your head, you know what you're supposed to be doing right now. Yeah. That's, that's why you get the moderately sized bucks is you know what you're supposed to be doing. But this sort of bifurcated brain drifts off, whether that's because of a lack of coffee or a lack of dopamine or whatever. You know what you do? Um, you yell, not yell. Yeah, yell. You say, out of scope. So if, I, if I'm supposed <laughs> to be prepping for a podcast, yeah. With David. And I find myself wondering why I keep getting that pop up about the data view plugin not being updated. Out of scope. And it really does, in the same way that sort of, if you like, here, in the same way that snapping a rubber band on your wrist will remind you that you're alive, occasionally yeah. yelling out of scope like might that. be able, and you're not being mean about it, but you are saying to yourself, this is not what we're doing right now. You know when this is really valuable? Sleep. When you're getting ready to go to sleep, I have found it so valuable to tell myself the equivalent of out of scope, which is like, this is, this is the time for doing the sleeping things. This is not the time for doing the other things. And uh, owing to some like abundance of fear, concern about safety, that's really what it ultimately comes down to. Why do we have trouble sleeping? We have trouble sleeping because some part of our brain doesn't feel safe. And you, you have to gently incline yourself to say, this is time for the sleeping things. It's not time for the other things. In your, wake, in your more waking hours, and that takes time. And you don't yell at yourself when you're trying to go to sleep. What are you, an idiot? But like yeah. in your day-to-day, -day, sometimes catch yourself. And if you're not the sort of person who yells, good for you. But just mentally take note of what's happening. Maybe take note a little bit of how you feel about it. This is called mindfulness. And then, and how you feel about how you feel. And then you just gently say out of scope and you move on to the next card. And that, maybe this gets to a, a topic, that gets you into life as a practice, whether it's for your work or not. You, you are basically in the some way that I think you've been a person who meditates in the past. Meditation is a practice. It's, it's not rotisserie football. Like it's a thing you do because it's a thing you do. Why do you cross? Why do we cross the street? I used to say to Billy, my kid, like we, here's why we, we cross the street when we know it's safe for us to cross the street. We don't follow when other people cross the street. I'm not trying to be an, a nonconformist. You need to figure that all of that stuff out for yourself. You need to find out what your hangups are learn to like be curious about them and then operationalize this idea of highlighting the things that your attention could most benefit right now and then being really fearless about applying your time to the things that got your attention and that's that's the game you know the older i get the more i appreciate because i i went and got like formal meditation training when i was in law school now that was well, that was a few years ago. <laughs> it was the early '90s. So, but the the, the lesson you learn, and, and yeah. I've I've had this practice my whole life, and I still do it daily. But one of the biggest things you learn is meditation is hard. You know, the the idea of it, it's it's not, it's not it, it, relaxation. It may be a component of meditation, especially to a, a lay person or a new meditator. But it's a terrible injustice to relaxation. The notion of relaxation, the notion of mindfulness, and very much the notion of meditation to act like that's when you zen out for an hour. It's not yeah. a spa treatment. No. It's an inward turning awareness. Uh, it's an ability to, to, to fearlessly watch what's happening in your brain. As, as, as uh, uh, maybe Steve Hagen, maybe the headspace person said, it's like looking down at a rushing river and never jumping off the bridge. And it's so difficult to do especially if you think the goal is to be like, like Eddie Van Halen the first time you pick up a guitar. Yeah. Is, well, isn't that I'll, difficult? I'll tell you, after 30 or 40 years, it still is very hard, and I still fail at it miserably. But If it was easy, you wouldn't need it. 
Well, but the skill they teach you, I think one of the most valuable skills that they teach you is how do you react to when you're trying to meditate? And let's just, you know, just to give a, a simple version of it. The idea <laughs> is to observe your mind, not get engaged with your mind, you know, and to try and quiet it. Watch, 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 stand, stand over a high, I have, there's so many analogies for this I love. Stand, um, like let's say you're in LA, right? And you're looking down one of those beautiful hills. Watch all, watch the traffic go by. Watch the honking horns, like the beginning of La La Land. Watch yeah. all those cars go by without stepping into any of them. So that's, that's the idea. But the thing you do as humans, and I guess it's just wired into us, is as soon as you get, you step into a car, as soon as you get caught up in it, <laughs> you catch yourself eventually like, ah, oh, I'm a bad meditator. I'm terrible at this. I'm a, and you, you start giving yourself a hard time. And that's why I love when you say you, you, you mindfully tell yourself out of scope. You don't yell at yourself. Oh, you did it again. You went out of scope. No, you just say, Oh, I went out of scope. In fact, the best advice I ever got from a meditation teacher is laugh at yourself. When you catch yourself doing right. things like that, say, Oh, that that's silly monkey. Look at that. Once again, he wanted to write an Apple script instead of doing There's this There's so work. many good ways. To, no, another one is the, 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 the humor sometimes comes a little later, but yeah. at the very least, you know, and again, this is, this is something people just gloss past because it sounds again, like hippie stuff, but, um, and it's, it's, I call it the lesson, the, the lesson I learned from watching Dr. Who, um, one of the many numerous lessons I've learned, um, is that the doctor always exhausts curiosity before he commits to fear. So the doctor commits to fear as little as possible. And think about how many times like he sees a dinosaur and goes, look at you. Or yeah. he sees, I guess you don't see the silence, unfortunately. But whatever it is, you you first look at it with curiosity. And sort of implicit in that curiosity and the way we're using that word is a slight detachment and very much a, a huge detachment from like, if you've got a default emotion, which for most men is anger, if you've got a feeling that the seven dwarves of bad emotions, if you've got something that just keeps popping up, if you you can develop a habit of getting angry very, very easily and absolutely not realize it. Yeah. Spoiler alert, a lot of people around you will, but to be curious in looking at looking inside, it's not solipsistic, it's not wasteful. And this is covered so much in this document where like it's the, this wisdom project where it's all stuff I've had to learn. And I, one of the things I said is one of the biggest takeaways for me from my understanding of mindfulness, which is very much a lay person's understanding, is the most simple way to understand mindfulness in your day-to-day -day is to find yourself, not force yourself, find yourself occasionally checking in with how you feel about how you feel, which sounds really weird until you start doing it. And then you go, oh, in my case, it could be. I've been thinking about this one neutral milk ho hotel song all morning and I didn't realize it. I've been singing this song in my head all day and I didn't realize. Isn't that odd that I could walk around and not realize that? Does that make me mad because I'm inattentive? It's kind of funny, but mainly it is noted. Hmm. Noted. You know, sort of like in radio language, you got Roger, you got Wilco, you got Acknowledge. Yeah. You know, they, they all mean different things. And I'm just sending you an act. I'm sending my brain an act and I'm saying acknowledged. I have noted that. I don't need to do anything about that. One of these recent additions to the document, um, what did I say? I said, sometimes your brain decides it's time to play tennis. So it starts serving ideas and images at you, each of which seems to require immediate, urgent, and committed volleys in return. But remember, it's your damned head. And it's fine if you just want to go sit in the bleachers and watch your brain fire heaters at no one until it tires itself out. Yeah. yeah. If I call that meditation, people wouldn't read it. Yeah. And I think people give the brain way too much credit, but that's a whole nother discussion. But I think that we have now solved your task manager problem. It feels done already. This episode of the Mac Power Users is brought to you by Indeed. Go to indeed.com slash MPU and join more than 3 million businesses worldwide using Indeed to hire great talent fast. What's the game where no one wins? The waiting game. When it comes to hiring, you don't wait for great talent to find you. Find them first with Indeed. When you hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. So instead of spending hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right skills, you can use their powerful hiring platform that can help you do it all. 
Indeed streamlines hiring with powerful tools that find you matched candidates. With Instant Match, over 80% of employers get quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed matches their job description the moment they sponsor a job, according to Indeed Data US. Indeed's hiring platform really is great because it gets you one step closer to the hire by immediately matching you with quality candidates. Even better, Indeed is the only job site where you only pay for applications that meet your must-have requirements, making it an unbelievably powerful hiring platform, delivering four times more hires than all other job sites combined, according to Talentless 2019. So join more than 3 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. Start hiring now with $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash MPU. That offer is good for a limited time. So claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash MPU. That's I-N-D-E-E-D.com slash MPU to support the show by saying you heard about it on this podcast. Terms and conditions do apply, but do you need to hire? You need Indeed. And our thanks to Indeed for their support of the Mac Power users and all of Relay FM. All right, Merlin, this week Apple released iOS 17 and iPadOS 17, which was kind of cool that they got both of them out the same week. Usually there's a little bit of a break there. I know you've been using the betas. Anything standing out for you this year? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's you know how it is where, like, in my case, I've been using uh, perhaps ill-advisedly, and this is not advice uh, of any kind, but, like, I got on the beta f- for everything but my main Mac my studio max yeah i'm I'm with you you're preaching to the choir all these podcasters like oh don't put it on your machine blah 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 i'm like man give me it maybe we'll talk about this more betas there's a phrase i sometimes like to ask myself david there are a number of questions that have become very important to me in life questions like what's your plan for this when i'm sitting there looking at some piece of garbage or what and a, a quote unquote good box What's your plan for this? Another one is, what are you saving this for? Like my friend Alex yelled at me because I was wearing an Apple Watch Ultra in the bathtub. I'm like, what am I, what am I saving this for? Like what, (laughs) like use the good scissors, eat the big piece of chicken. Do I mean like, I sound like Warren Zevon or something, but like, what, what are we, what are you saving it for? (laughs) These are computers. (laughs) Let's use them. Yeah. Um, But so I've been on it since June. So a lot of stuff has kind of fallen off. And I'm, I'm even struggling to remember what it was that made me want to get on. But I've seen so many wonderful improvements. And with the exception of battery life, of course, uh, the betas have been great for me. I've got this theory that because they're so busy with Vision OS that they were more discriminating about what they added to iPhone. Oh, interesting. You think it's partly a resource-related issue? Yeah, like not like, resources in like money, but as in like <laughs> everybody, anybody who ever goes, why don't they take some of the marketing budget and put that into watches? And you're like, yeah, are you nine? Like, go read Mythical Man Month. It takes nine months to make a baby, no matter how many women you assign to the job. Yeah, uh, but I, I feel like they they like made good choices this year. They're all like good little quality of life improvements. That's and- my favorite. That's my favorite things. Absolutely, my favorite things. Well, you know, it's it's so interesting in like the um. There's there's a thing that at least in my mental model started really happening a few couple three years into the life of the iPad, where you know you think about you think about people like Federico or yeah. I Michael, and there are these people who are like that's it from now on I'm doing everything on an iPad, which is fine, that's fine. Yeah. But like that's not my jam. I'm glad it's yours. But like, and then in the time since that, you're just like, ugh. Personally, the multi views and the windows and the sliding, if that stuff works for you and you like an iPad Hakuna Matata, but like for me, all of that stuff is not done. It's not strong. It's not solid. And whatever that dumb stage manager thing is that people like, that to me is just like, I don't know. It's like, it's like living in a simulation about a play about a computer. The, the, the trick to being happy with an iPad is using it the way Apple shows it in the commercials. If you try to go beyond that, you're going to be unhappy. Oh, David, from your from your out to God's ear, we've learned sometimes overtly, sometimes more subtly that Apple is trying to tell you things, even when it doesn't realize it's trying to tell you things to our appearances. Hey, that scroll direction, you know what? You can reverse that for now. But like, 
you're, you're going to be fighting City Hall for the rest of your life if you don't get your mind right about how Apple wants you to use this. Don't you think? Yeah, yeah. It's great for reading comics and like looking at ivory. <laughs> That's what it's great oh, at, you know? No, I mean, but you could even do a lot of real serious production. I just talked about on MPU a few weeks ago. I, I set up an iPad with a clicky keyboard on my on my separate desk. And it's like a like a modern typewriter. I go there. So the first I, time, the first time that you, there's two ways to look at this. One is that the first time that I clicked on the menu bar in Finder, expecting to go to the top of the page, I knew iPad had gotten into my brain. <laughs> and, but then, perhaps even yeah. more significantly, um, the first time that I reached for a mouse back when I just had a keyboard, but no input, yeah. other input. Device, the first time that I reached for a mouse when I was using an iPad. Same feeling of like, oh, there's really something to this. So I'm not trying to drag that. What I am trying to say is that if I were going to like really oversimplify this in a way that's not even useful, there's all that big stuff. We're all going, is this going to be the year? Is it the year of Linux on the desktop? Is it the year of finally your iPad becomes a Mac? Well, okay, that's fine. That's a track over here. And I, I, I that's, that's great. Like, but it's the, I don't want to say little things because it's not just little things. It's the improvements in all of the things that I use and love. And it's the, the introduction, and I'd be happy to talk about any of these. The th it's the introduction of the things that I haven't even yet realized are going to be huge for me. And it's very difficult to guess or predict or reckon how useful something will be. This is true about Apple stuff in general. It, you don't really know what it's like to use that thing until you use it. it you really... And like, that's when you realize when on the one hand, the reality distortion field is down, but on the other hand, you're also saying, oh, this is actually like when I, like 3D touch or force touch, that's just whatever the thing is that's now gone. That drives me crazy. First using that, I would kill to have that again. I, yeah. the, the, I, there, I wish there was something like a magnetic cursor where like, I, I can never get the cursor to go where I, anything that improves that. Here, can I give you one off the dome? Sure. The, the new, I don't know what's it called. You're the Mac guy or the Apple person. What's the thing where you hit the microphone and you can speak, but also edit it while you're speaking? You call it dic some kind of new dictation, yeah, well, right? Uh, Siri dictation, I think, is the general name for it. But they also have voice that control. Is, that they is ridiculously powerful. And I, I, I can guess about others, but I can promise you this about myself. It seemed like something I didn't need until I started using it. And until, again, in my parlance, to find myself using it more. Because if there's anything... And again, I, I'm weird. I, I start almost everything in drafts, including text messages. I mean, I don't write every text message in there, but the first text message I send, sometimes a thread, like that's what it's for. I write all of that. I spell called check drafts. it. Yes. It should also just be called Merlin Cares. It matters to me that this be the best sentence I can write. I, I don't need you guys to like that, but it's critical to me. I do that. I try really hard. Anything that lets me in this instance, like write faster, write more sort of efficiently to write more functionally in the same way that most people, it's great that you're going to have a camera that l lets this young person's sweater look so vivid while they lay in a puddle. Great. What I really use it for is remembering where I parked or, or whatever the functional uses of writing. Well, that functional use is, you know, something for a task list, something for show notes, something for just, just to remember. And like I say, I have lists and lists and lists of just like fake band names or recipes. David, I have a table of every time I've cooked with sous vide method so that I can have a log of how each setting went, which sounds dumb. But like to, to do sous vide cooking, I had to unlearn 50 years of cooking, 40 yeah. years of cooking. And having a log that I could tell <laughs> that would show me how that went, oh, that's why your egg was weird because you're still trying to act like it's an oven. And having a markdown table where I write that down, it's on GitHub. You can go get it. It's, on, it's, a, it's a gist on GitHub. My GitHub's really good. You should go. I, I have a sous vide note too, Nerlin. I'm, it's not, that's not weird at all. I have one salmon? too. Salmon? <laughs> salmon. But it's salmon. Salmon? What's your favorite? Salmon? Um, sure. Yes, salmon. Good pork chops. Pork chops are good. I, I'm not a big red meat you ever, guy. You ever try the Andy Naka guys, thing of reheating a burrito? Uh, I don't. So I, I, I'm good not, for reheating. So good for reheating a steak. You just, I didn't you even know it. that was possible. Yeah. I'll so have like to try you made that. a steak, you made a, or like you made like a, like I'll make a rib roast every couple of months, like prime rib. And, um, boy, you know what you don't want to do? You don't want to be a guy 
and it is guys, who throw that in the microwave at 100% for six minutes or whatever. That's stupid. First of all, learn to work the percentages. You're an adult. But the, 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 let's say you did it to 131. You heat the bath to 130 or, you know, your version of one degree below what you cooked it at. Throw it in, suck the bag up, drop it in for 30 minutes. Best reheated food you've ever had in your life. Well, I'm a fan too. I, I think they're great. Uh, but the, uh, in fact, somebody told me once, like a lot of the steakhouses are like just using sous vide in the back and then they cook it. Yeah, when you remember the first it. time I saw it, it was Richard Blaze on Top Chef was the first time I ever saw that done. And it just seemed so exotic. It was like all, all his foams and nitrogen or whatever. But to your, to your, to what we're talking about here, anything that makes those kinds of interactions easier. Now that dictation thing. Yes. I, I tend to write things. If I'm on a computer, I'm going to type it almost always. I've, I have experimented with trying to go all in on Siri as an input device. And you learn a lot, let's just say, when you do that, for better or for worse. Sometimes for better, for better. But for me, like if I, if I know I'm about to say something, like, like I'm in a hot and heavy with my family about like where we're ordering food tonight, because apparently all I do is talk about food, right? Like if, so I say, I hit the thing, I start talking. It's, first of all, dictation has come so far. Yeah, th- this year in particular is a big jump because I'm so looking changed. forward to seeing the improvements that they've talked about. I feel like I'm already seeing it a little bit because I no longer have 60 different unknowable weird things that happen when I type. That for the last two years, my typing has been going into the toilet. I I, I don't know what's changed. Probably I'm old. Maybe it's because I have you know acetone on my thumbs, <laughs> but you know. The, the typing on iOS has, I'm, it's gotten worse for me. Um, and if we're going back and forth real quick, I might just say something like I hit the button. Like, let's say right now, like we were having a conversation. If it was like, sounds good or thumb or something. Yeah. My brain knows that the fastest way is the normal way. You know, this is the way, but then there's another part of my brain that goes, no, 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 this is going to be more like hit the button. Actually, I had a pretty late lunch, comma, so I would be fine with just foraging tonight, period, new line, new line. Or, you know, we could do spin the choice, comma, and we could just get whatever anybody wants, period. I can almost promise you that that small paragraph, including the time you allot for corrections, which you should allot, the correct, which corrections you can be making while you're still speaking. This, yeah. Try this. It's wild. If you need to type more than a quick sentence, I can almost promise you that that dictation thing is going to be faster. But it is a question of causing yourself to remember to use it more. Or do you, and I'm not talking about like being in your car and going like, oh, I'm in my Tesla, I'm very busy. I'm talking about like just you and your repose. You just kind of, in my case, like I'm kind of polite about it. I, I take out my phone, I hit the, the button and I say, hey Dingus, hey Dingus, remind me to bring home grapes at 3 p.m. That kind of thing, right? Which I, I'm getting more comfortable with. Do you, do you use that in your day to day the dictation? All the time. I mean, because I grew up as a, a lawyer when we. You used, were a dragon dictate boy back in the day, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, I've gone. You, the you're, whole you journey. were the first person that got me excited about dragon dictate. Yeah, well, when they brought that engine over to the Mac, I was telling everybody in the world how great it was. But the, uh, but they left the Mac since then. I'm not sure that uh, what Apple is doing is as good as Dragon was. Uh, I'd have I have to really look to compare at this point. Well, in but- the early days, I mean, like to to you had to do so much training, like overt yeah. training, sort yeah. of like I've now done with Descript for podcast stuff. But like you know, it's I think Apple probably was un- at the time that Siri was acquired and made into an Apple thing. There's no, for example, here's an, here's one from 17. Have you done the thing where you make a personal voice? I have not done that yet. I've, I've got it on my it's list. It's kind of excruciating. It didn't yeah. work for me. I had to do it. I did it like four times and each time takes a full 15 minutes, which doesn't sound like a big deal. But if you've just spent 15 minutes reading what they tell you to read and clicking buttons, which is like a pretty joyless kind of, yeah. you know. And that's how you used to train dictation as well. So exactly. Be, and I yeah. bet, I think Apple made it, if, if I'm guessing correctly, Apple made a good choice in not making that a thing that required training and updates. And, you know, who am I speaking to right now? But with this new release, uh, people listening, if you've got the latest update and you haven't tried it lately, it does exactly what Merlin said. You can open up drafts or text edit or notes or whatever your writing app of choices. And you can start dictating into it and you can make corrections on the keyboard and you can keep dictating. 
it's it's so many levels above and, where and, and it like was. It'll say things like it'll do this thing, and I, I want I think this must involve some certain amount of on device machine learning. But it does the the coolest thing, and you see this goes by in a demo, and Craig grins, and we move on to the next thing. But the ability to go, oh, you know, that thing I typed wasn't right. Here's the neat thing: when you click on anywhere in that area, it could be especially if it's a name of something, or if it's a clause, a phrase, you'll get a little pop up that says, "Is this what you meant?" Because it knows about something, knows about your phone, knows about the vagaries of the English language and the use of homonyms and whose versus whose or Mary versus Mary versus Mary. It understands parts of speech. It's, and then it, and now with 17, it's learning more about what you mean by that. Yeah. You're not going to get, it's not my ducking problem anymore. Th- that ability. And now the thing is, okay, I just told you that. Did you know that? Cool. It's cool that you knew that. Are you using that? Because if you start using that, you're pretty soon going to feel like a little bit of a caveman having to type paragraphs with your thumb on a bus. And some advice I'd give you if you want to give it a try is, let's say you need to write an important letter or something, outline it, do a mind map of it. Do Just figure out what you want to say. The The problem that all dictation engines face is as humans- And, and then delete the two paragraphs before you get to the point where you actually said it. Yeah, that's true. I hope the email finds you well. <laughs> but when we turn on the microphone, if we don't really know where we're going with it, then- we, you know, we ramble, we have spaces. It makes it much harder for the engine to give you a good transcript. So uh, the trick is just kind of think it out. And honestly, doing that only helps what you're doing anyway. So just take a minute if you're going to do something long, but for even just a one paragraph thing. Yeah. It's also such an interesting thing. And like, I I continue to hold to this day that, I don't know, I, I said something a little bit hot on Mastodon recently about where, when, when did, when did the Amazon lady in the tube come around circa 2015? There are ways in which, and there are so many options for that right now. My favorite amongst them is the Google product. It's the most functional and dependable for that kind of thing, way over Siri or the Amazon product. But think about all of the barriers that were involved in that. I mean, barrier zero was really, I'm going to talk to my lamp I just talk into the, you feel like an idiot. You've never done this before. You look yeah. like a rube. You, you look like, um, oh geez, uh, who's the guy in uh, Blade Runner uh, who has the robots? Uh, J, J, JB or whatever. You know, the guy who builds all the robots. Yeah, You're like, you've created this whole room full of automatons that kind of awkwardly march around and you call them friends. That's how you feel the first time you say, hello, dingus. And then you're reluctant. And then what happens? Well, guess what? At first, Siri wasn't very good. And then it got better. And then it got bad again. And that's going to continue forever, probably. But even if you are totally committed, you're in the house by yourself. Nobody is there. You have 20 minutes, an hour to play with this thing. Just try, just talk and see what happens, right? If it doesn't, on the one hand, like you, you may not know. It may, it may feel awkward at first, right? That's zero. And then number one is like, then you're like, oh, that didn't do the thing I expected. And now I feel stupid. If it doesn't do the thing that you expected, my current bet noir, that it might be beta related, it might be Comcast related, it might be Eero related, it might be Era surfboard related, but I scream into the air for Siri to do anything and it frequently says, you know, just a moment, I get those three things where I'm like, no, just a moment, this is taking longer than I expected, having trouble connecting right now. And so I'm yelling saying, hey, Dingus, play Turn It On Again by Genesis. And then like, now I'm having a conversation and then it's playing it too loud and it doesn't hear me when I yell. How does that make me feel? Well, it makes me feel like an idiot because I'm in the shower and for six years I've had no problem requesting turn it on again because it's one of my shower songs and (laughs) title, right? But when it doesn't work, you're back to step zero and you're feeling like an idiot, right? When it doesn't work. Yeah, I agree. I mean, and, and Siri is a problem. It's probably the biggest problem Apple has. It's not fixed. And but like, just to, you I don't know, want- Ubi soon, w- wither Siri. Like what the hell, what, we're over here talking about all this AI stuff and bleep bloop stuff. And it's like, and again, now I'm just parroting things the ATP guys have said, but I happen to totally agree. What ever happened to this? Like is shortcuts done? Is Siri done? Is Apple TV, done? sorry, now I'm getting on a jag. But okay, here's all I'm trying to say about this is like, David Foster Sparks, I'm here to tell you that I, at this point, I have less confidence in SIRI in particular, but voice assistants just in general, 
I have less confidence about these things than I've had since they came along. I think they, they're getting less bad or I'm getting more stupid, but I can't tell you how much less often now my options come down to, well, I can yell into the air to turn off the lights in the Western part of the house, which it might get, or it might not get, or it's talking to me a lot now at 1115 and explaining that this uh, hue bloom light that I haven't had for eight years couldn't be reached and it wants to talk to me about that. The Amazon products really want you to do so many different things. They want you to do everything in the world apart from what you're doing right now. Did you know that I'm also able to like generate fantasy football? No, I, I don't know that and I don't care. Stop talking, right? Yeah. But those those things all become part of the problem. That becomes part of a, an aggregate resistance to participating in this project if you feel like an idiot and it's not doing what you want. And uh, there's so many things where I just feel like Siri, in the same way, you know, how iCloud has become practically meaningless in terms of like, well, what is it? What is iCloud? Yeah. You know, there's, there's some of the stuff in Siri is, for, for example, in this example, dictation, so well done so fast. And it's my understanding that most of that is happening on device. So you're not de dealing with what John Syracuse calls internet weather, right? That, that yeah. stuff is so powerful, but this ultimately gets to a much deeper Apple challenge, which is this stuff is not easy to discover and it's not easy to learn. And I'll just close by saying, I still think it's unconscionable that there is not a single, not a, not a page. There should be a page you go to where Apple tells you everything you can say to Siri. I don't mean every possible verb. I mean, I want, I don't, I don't want like eight bullets on how you can plan your canoeing trip with Craig. That stuff doesn't help me. But like, did you, did you know? I mean, my wife, you know, yesterday, I always say to my wife, cause she's a better memory than me. I'm like, how do you remember to move the car? How do you remember to do these things? And I was like, did you know, you know, like you use reminders. And she's like, well, not really. I was like, well, they're really cool. I was like, do you know about arriving and leaving? She's like, I don't know what that means. And I said, did you know that you can say, hey, dingus, remind me to get grapes when I leave the house in 20 minutes? That sentence, David, you get, you, you get the power of that sentence, right? Yeah. Remind me to bring grapes in 20 minutes. What that means is that no matter what happens in the world, no matter where you are on the planet, in 20 minutes, you will get a reminder to do that. But when do you forget stuff? You forget stuff because you left and you forgot it. What if you gave yourself a reminder so that the second you leave your geolocated area, it says, did you remember the grapes? That's really powerful. How many people, not, maybe not listening to this show, but people you love who you consider real smart, how many people know about that and use it? How do you discover that? Are, are you on Mac Stories? Are you subscribed to Mac Stories or M Matthew Casanelli? Are you like learning all about how to make shortcuts? It's there's so much resistance to all of those things. But even if you're not going to be a, an ardent student or scholar of these things, there's little bits of incredibly powerful functionality, especially in iOS 17. That's just going to be so much better. The ability to do stuff with an, again, stuff you never see. Like when you guys do a long press on almost any icon for almost any Apple thing on your phone, and you're going to discover the equivalent of a right click. That's really cool. Sometimes really brilliant. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. When you click on this note, like, you know, bring up my latest note. Oh, I didn't know I could do that. Like a one click, go make this. And now the thing in iOS 17 where widgets are not going to be just a launcher, right? I feel like though we're, we're con conflating two things. We got, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's the right word actually, but the, um, we've the right got word. Siri dictation is much better. And I think largely fixed Siri as an, a digital assistant is in terrible shape. I don't know. I, I do look at like tea leaves here and I feel like what the magic word they used in the presentation with dictation is we're using a new transformer engine. Well, yes. You know what T stands for in GPT <laughs> stands for transformer. I, I don't think Apple ever wants to say that they're using artificial no. intelligence. I, I think ML is as far as they're going to tend to go. Yeah. Because the word is for now, for now, well, even just like it's culturally defined, and I don't think they want to subject themselves to wherever that goes. But they're solving the dictation problem with AI. I feel like the way out with Siri is AI too. I mean, they they made oh, a choice. 100%. And, and I, I can't help it. I wrote a blog post about this. I, I feel like that they're, they're working on that. If you look at like the rumor mill and the stuff about all the money they're spending on AI, 
it's only natural that this comes into Siri. And we may sometime in the future uh, have Apple make this big announcement that Siri is way better and it's using a transformer engine or something that's not AI, but, but is AI. But that's not there yet. But uh, at least this year, if you want to get dictation working for you, yes. I'm, I'm with it. I think you can go and, and make that happen. Well, and I hope you'll forgive me for saying I disagree and I absolutely because I absolutely agree with you. I agree with you that it is a problem that we are concatenating or conflating those things. But whose fault? If there is a fault, it's not mine. The yeah. fault is in not our stars, but in Siri, which is that if you call all of this stuff Siri, and, and we're kind of back to compost in the CRISPR here, which sounds yeah. like a Morrissey song, but like we're kind of back to this issue of like, you know, resistance, as Steve Pressfield told us, like it takes very little to accumulate resistance about something. And there's this whole big thing called Siri that Apple pays on to a whole bunch of different things that are very unrelated, very much like iCloud. The thing is, I don't know who I have to service to get every single file in iCloud to always be downloaded on every device. I, I, have, I have very fast internet everywhere I go, and it's still mind-boggling me to me that 300K JPEGs are not synced everywhere at once. How do I fix that? I don't know. Maybe there's a P list. Maybe I go into Lingen. Maybe like I, I run some kind of like, you know, I don't know, maybe there's some kind of fix this D that I have to run. But that sours one's feeling about everything under the umbrella called Siri when one part of it kind of sucks. And I don't think that's anybody's, nobody's to blame for that, but Apple. And um, so, so anyway, but there's, there's lots of, we don't have to go on about this, but like there are, there are numerous, numerous things like that, that I, I wish it was easier to bubble up to people. You know, I went to a wedding in June when I was uh, three weeks into the beta and uh, a, a, a brother-in-law whom I, this is real quick. Um, we're up in uh, upstate New York, uh, but by where Todd Rundgren recorded some of his best albums. Uh, and the band where the big pink, the pink house was, um, big pink. Um, my brother and I were at this wedding and what happens at a wedding? I'll tell you what happens at the wedding is two guys, one in their fifties, one in their sixties can't hear anything. Cause my hearing is mega screwed from years yeah. of rock music yeah. playing and listening to rock music. And whether it's going to dinner with my wife or being at a wedding for my most beloved niece, no offense, everybody, John and I can't hear anything and we're laughing about it. And we find we have to go, go to somewhere that's like a little, you know, further away to be able to talk. So later that night, I would gone back to the room, taking a rest, had a shower. I came back and I said, I hope you'll forgive me, John. Um, th I hope this doesn't seem gross, weird, or overreaching, but I brought my air, I cleaned them and I brought my AirPods. And what I would like you to do is consider popping in these AirPods and letting me give you just a real quick demo of a new feature. And he's like, yeah, yeah sure, sure, sure. And so you can guess what I did. So yeah. you've been on the beta, right? Yeah. So these are Air AirPods Pro 2, whatever the most recent like little chappy ones are. And I said, okay, right now, nothing is happening. Nothing is playing. There's, n there's no anything on. I said, now notice what happens when I do this and I click and he goes, whoa, I hear, whoa, this is weird. I said, yeah, that's called transparency. And it's a very under, it's, it, it's a, it's a very, um, it undersells what transparency is. Yeah. Uh, the great chairman, John Gruber once described it as like AR for audio. And that's true. I know that my AirPods and my AirPods max, I know they're amazing because sometimes I can't tell what mode I'm in. If I can't tell what mode I'm in, they're working great where I have to click to go. I don't even know that there's noise canceling on now. But when I click this, noise canceling is off. And what's neat is my noise, when I, I don't go to off, I go to transparency. And guess what transparency does? It greatly, using, I guess, computers, amplifies exactly the range of hearing that I need help with. Because guess what? There's also custom profiles. There's apps that you can get where you do periodic hearing tests. And it figures out exactly what your problem is with various ranges, like going to an audiologist. And guess what? That You can say, now, please apply that when I'm using the phone or when I'm listening to music. And then you can even go even further and say, now I also want this to be something where um, 
I mean, you know how all that works. I want this kind of sound profile buried like six levels deep in accessibility inside of settings. I don't, I mean, I, 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 accessibility is so great for everybody, but yeah. like calling it accessibility makes it seem like it's something that's not for a healthy person, which is a bummer. And then guess what I did? Then I clicked on adaptive. And when I clicked on adaptive, which is new, it's doing this insane eldritch combination of noise canceling. And we saw this in, in the wonderful, hilarious, very, I thought very funny demo at WWDC where the guy's walking around campus and leaf blowers aren't bothering him. It is dynamically, like within nanoseconds, adjusting to changes in your environment so that you can hear the bus that's about to hear, hit you, but you probably won't hear the leaf blower that's been going on for the last few minutes. And we're not even getting into the stuff of turning this into sort of an ad hoc, if you like, hearing aid which is where you can you can do this thing where you set your phone down and it's almost like a like a little spy device to make it easier. When my wife and I went out to dinner for the first time after COVID, I put in AirPods so that I could hear her in the restaurant we were in and it worked great. So, this is early days. Let's check back in a year and find ourselves asking how many people who didn't think they needed it have learned that that's even a feature out yeah, I am a big fan of it too. I like um, you and I are of a similar age, and I played in a lot of bands. My tinnitus has got bad over the years, and um, it oh, helps with that. Sucks. You know, you know that you know tinnitus means that's when you hear the the ring. You know, that's the range you lost. Did you know that? Yeah, exactly. Your brain. My is wife told me that she has tinnitus. She has organic tinnitus. She has it from like a weird ear thing that she's gotten surgery for. But I, that was because I've had, of course, I played in all kinds of bands since I was seventeen. And like, I, I, I had heard, I knew that I had lost the range of a lot of the female voices, which was frustrating, yeah. but then I started losing the range of, of everybody's voices, but the ringing is the, it's trying to fill in the range that you lost. It's so upsetting to me. Yeah. Like one cheap trick concert might've been the thing that cost you that range. Yeah. It's like your brain says, well, I'm not getting any frequency there. So I'll go ahead and just generate it. Why That not? was all such valuable stuff. Apple, the, particularly this week was really pumped to tell us about all I, I love it's great that they're green and everything that's fantastic i don't know if we really needed quite that much of, of a show but i think it's kind of it's a it's a it's it's a it's it's exciting that all that stuff is out there but there's so many of these things that are that will really change how you use your phone everybody knows how to like quit all your apps which is not a thing you generally need to do <laughs> this is the problem with that advice also is because there's people who are like you want you're on the bus and i like to shoulder surf just to see what people are doing and i can't believe how often people especially younger people quit every single app manually yeah. which everybody then, so then what happens then all the people out there who who read mac rumors go you know you don't you never need to do that and then i say because i'm this guy i go really you never need to do that you've never noticed something that's got like a runaway process yeah. Yeah. like <laughs> And but so there's all this like conventional wisdom about all these kinds of things that go around. But I don't know if that same whisper network exists. You get cases where, like with my kid, like the widgets came along. My kid, my kid had widget smith and didn't know that I knew underscore. Everybody got widget smith. You know what else everybody did? Everybody did that thing where you replace your icons with that initially very janky process of creating a shortcut that's basically just a picture that launches the app, and then you watch the app app, app yeah. upload. They know that stuff. But people don't have access to how all of these things improve, singing along with me, quality of life. Yeah. And it's so, I wish there was an easier way than saying, oh, come to the Apple store on Saturday and sit in a chair while somebody does a demo. I, I don't know how you bubble all of that up. Well, the, they, there's work to be done. You have a favorite thing? You have a favorite thing on 17? Uh, well, uh, the dictation to me is a big one. But the, the other one that I really like uh, is I like that new thing where you put your phone in a magnetic holder and it turns it into an alarm clock. I mean, that's, I know it sounds kind of dumb. I adore that. I, I'm faking that with, I don't, I, I it's, for, it's a, not 12 South. It's one of those cool companies like 12 South or, yeah. that, but like, I cannot find every single picture showing standby mode has this cool charger that will do landscape, which yeah. I am now faking with the Apple branded, well, I'm thinking in one way with literally just this charger that I put on its side. But you know the thing where it's like um, you can charge your watch, the white, the foldy thing where it's like yeah, it's yeah. got I, – I have it on its side at night, and it's so lame. 
But isn't that incredible? Like all you can do with those little widgets and like, you know what? They should also call it office mode because it would be nice to still get certain kinds of notifications that fit your focus. Oh God, we haven't even touched on focus. I, I think that's a third you can rail. Have a page? That's a what? third rail for you and me. If we were, oh, 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 yeah. it would be a five hour podcast because I have so much Follow to say me. about focus mode. I'd, I'd love Sorry. to hear how you're using it, but maybe we'll do that next time. Cause I, so what I, do you think? Generally, they'll feel good about 17? Yeah. Yeah. Me good too. job, Apple. Good job. Good job. Take a day off, guys. This episode of the Mac Power Users is brought to you by Tailscale. Go to tailscale.com slash MPU to secure remote access to shared resources. Human scale teams build trusted networks by securely connecting devices with Tailscale. With Tailscale, you can connect to Home Assistant to check on your place while away, you can also stream movies, shows, and music anywhere from your network detached storage box using Plex or Jellyfin. Plus, you can access a pie hole from anywhere and secure a connection when on a Wi-Fi you don't really trust. And you can now sign in to Tailscale using your Apple ID, so if you prefer having your credentials managed by Apple in the iCloud, this option is for you. Just sign into Tailscale with your Apple ID on Mac or iPhone using Touch ID or Face ID for a super fast sign in. Plus, you can also use a pass key to authenticate your Tailscale account, a new feature you may remember seeing at WWDC. Once connected, you can use Tail Drop to move files between MacBook, iPhone, iPad, Linux, VMs, Docker containers, Stream Deck, and, and even Windows boxes. If you're looking to share your work more widely, Tailscale Funnel makes it easier than ever to share your local development over the internet for collaboration, testing, and experimentation. Using Tailscale Funnel, you can receive a webhook from GitHub, share a local service with your coworker, or even host a personal blog or status page right on your own computer. Funnel is a secure way to expose your development environment at a stable URL over the internet, complete with auto-provisioned TLS certificates. Use it from the command line or the new VS Code extension. With a few keystrokes, you can securely expose a local port to the internet right from the IDE. Tailscale has clients for Mac OS and iOS, Windows, Linux, and Android. The free plan includes three users and 100 devices. So head over to tailscale.com slash MPU to build your team's trusted network today. That's tailscale, T-A-I-L-S-C-A-L-E dot com slash MPU. And if you're interested in working at Tailscale, they're currently hiring a macOS engineer. You can navigate to their careers page for more. Our thanks to Tailscale for their support of the Mac Power users. Actually, the first thing I wanted to talk to you about is your wisdom project. And we are <laughs> getting to it. We're, we run long, as usual. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the wisdom project, because it's it's one of my favorite things you've done in a long time. I I'm a big fan. Of, let me describe it from the outside. And then you tell me. About oh, I would it. love that. Thank you. Okay. So, so, for, David, I'm just glad you're aware of it. It makes me so happy. I'm, I love this project so much. And it makes me happy that you know that it exists. I, I am a sucker for these lists, right? We, we all are. None of us would be here if we weren't a sucker for lists. <laughs> right? the, the, there's a famous list Thelonious Monk made for his musicians called the 25 rules for music. Oh, is that the I've, one where you have to wear a hat to keep the heat in or something like that? Was that him? Uh, you know, um, stop playing oh, all that? those yeah. weird notes, play the melody. <laughs> He's you've so got, funny. My favorite one is you've got to dig it. You dig it. No, you got to dig it. You dig, <laughs> you know? And so, you know, there's, so there's that list. You know, Werner Herzog, you're probably familiar with all of these. Oh no, I, I, David, I, I, the first time I, oh, sorry, this is a weird flex, but the first time I bonded with the actor, John Hodgman was about the book of lists. Yeah, which is my was absolutely my favorite book as a child. It, it is a running bit in my family. The Werner Herzog rule: get used to the bear behind you. Every time my kids start complaining, I say, <laughs> "Get used to the bear behind you." And and they, <laughs> now so they good. just roll their eyes. But of all the people I know, I feel like you're the guy to do this for for us nerds, oh, and you've thanks, done man. it. And so that's my <laughs> take. You you made well, this I, website. You know, my only correction would be I'm doing it because part of yeah. this project is that because it's not fit for any purpose it's something that just goes on and on it started as a once again something that started as a this is so funny you're not going to believe this but it started as a challenge for do by friday but it was the obsidian challenge 
is what made me start this. Okay. I love that. Yeah. I love that. And so, but like I needed, and so like, you know, uh, most, most things you do in life need two parts. If you really think about it, everything needs infrastructure, but almost every project needs two parts. And the most basic kind of idea of that is like, well, there's the thing that I make and there's the place where I put it or make it. And so in, in, to invert that, what am I going to do for learning a little bit about Obsidian? And I started typing. And I just had this funny idea about all the things. Think about all the things you've picked up over the years. Um, well, as long as I'm here. So, so, so the book of lists, huge. Another book I loved in college is called Rules of Thumb. And it's exactly that. It's just a bunch of lists of when you, how to choose a line at a grocery store, how to pick a melon. Uh, in a later edition, there's a nice bit about Inbox Zero in there, I'm very happy to say, um, that you there are all these little like nuggets, some of which are not very useful, but some of which really, really are. It's ways to be safe. It's ways to be less stressed. It's, it's sometimes it's a way to mentally repot your brain just enough to do a quick reboot and realize that you were looking at it in a way that was not, as the Buddhists say, skillful. So what this ended up, to make a long story short, not my strong suit, this started as me going, I wrote down the very first thing is still the very first thing, right? So I started this thing. I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to write down, uh, start by just, because, you know, with any wiki style project, I'm a big believer in trying to minimize the number of stubs. So like start with everything on one page and then only break up when and if it's sensible, but keep it scalable. The worst way you can screw yourself with a wiki is by making it 50 pages that don't have anything on them. So I just started typing and the idea was, you know what, all those little things in my head, I've got so many of these little things and because I'm a retired productivity guru, uh, I do have a lot of little bits. Uh, I've written a fair amount and thought a great deal about these things. And so I, I typed an asterisk and a space. This becomes important. I typed an asterisk and a space. And I wrote down the first thing that came into my mind of things I've learned, which is this. Sometimes an email is just a way to say I love you. New line. What was that? Oh, it's it's probably nothing, but if you really sit with that for 30 seconds, you're going to realize it's about a lot of things. Sometimes an email is just a way to say, I love you. Hey, I'm Merlin, man. And it bugs me when people are being all weird about sending me lots of email. Yeah, but Merlin, who needs to learn things, have you ever considered that maybe sometimes an email is just a way to say, I love you? Oh, well, that does kind of change the way that I look at it. And maybe maybe it would be good for everybody if instead of, again, I'm a man, so I default to anger title. Now, how about instead I go, well, maybe that's somebody who loves me and neither of us knows it. N- next line, something. I, I don't remember all of them, but like next line, something like, um, sometimes, or something along the lines, sometimes it's easier not to be terrible. <sighs> Great, thanks. Well, Okay, but how often do you find yourself being terrible when you didn't need to be? And what this became is now, I don't know how many lines, but I think it's around 10,000 words and is literally a markdown uh, UL. It's an unordered list of things that are between two words and a medium-sized paragraph. And the the, the hook for the project, which is honestly the hook for the project, Every time it occurs to me, every time I remember something, write down something that it was very difficult for me to learn and often even more difficult to operationalize. Write it down when I think of those and just start collecting those in a completely, not disorganized, but unorganized way. And that grew now over two years. That's become this project that I, I, I'm I'm, I'm not going to front. I love this project. And some people really like it. I, 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 it's become, you know, David, back to the hipster PDA, it's so important in life to know where something goes. Like this is where the car keys go. You know where the car keys don't go? Anywhere else in the world, right? When it occurs to me that I remember um, some of my own wisdom. It's the thing I used to say to my kid. We, we, we don't buy food to get free toys and we don't buy toys to get free food. Now, that might be useful to somebody, but you know what it's going to be really useful for is somebody who doesn't need me to hold their genitals while they read it. 
Because if you sit and think about that for a minute, in my opinion, you're going to realize how many times in life it wasn't really food and it wasn't really toys, but how many times you did a really dumb thing because you thought it was about something else. And yeah. if you say to yourself, you, then you guess what? You start to maybe become a little bit aware, like old Merlin in his 50s. You start to realize that the pursuit of free toys should not involve buying fast food. And I love doing it. I don't, I'm on a little bit of a, of a break now, but the, the, the big picture of the project is, and this is a, a repo on GitHub. It's free to everything. It's, you know, it's, well, not free to everything, but it's, you know, CC4 or whatever, like anybody can do stuff with it. Some people have made little apps that'll like bring up um, the stuff. And I have, uh, the, the goal, if there is any, is, is, is the goal is not to produce a book. God, God knows that's not my jam. The goal is to keep adding to this, but then to also at some point when it's appropriate and doable to get some help from somebody to turn this into more of a full-fledged website where you could say, show me everything you've got about cooking or show me everything you've got about how to be a parent or whatever. But, and the reason I'm telling you here, David, the reason I'm excited and I'm the reason I'm glad you love it is this, I can pr almost promise you to a near certainty this would not happen if it weren't for Markdown. Why? Well, I've already not written two books. I don't need to not write more books. What I need is the freedom to type in bullets anytime that I want without worrying about what it's for, where it goes, and whether I've completed the deadline. And it's so freeing. It's so fun. I love writing, believe it or not. And it's such a great outlet. And I think there's some good stuff in it. I think it's great. And I, what I would like, I would buy a little leather book where you've got one on a page and I could just sit here and open it to a random page and think about my do, friend. Do you know about oblique strategies? What? Uh, do you know this? Brian Eno and Peter Schmidt in the 1970s started producing something called oblique strategies. And it's a pile of cards, each of which has a fairly wackadoo general, just a sentence on it. And Brian Eno would use these, for example, like producing David Bowie. And he would say, sometimes find himself with the challenge. You pick out a random card and you just read what it says. Here's one. Faced with a choice, do both. I don't know. Is that helpful? I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe it isn't. Simple subtraction, right? And there's like a hundred of these. You know, my favorite, honor thy error as a hidden intention. Because sometimes you need a random card to tell you what you didn't know you were doing. I should make cards. But the leather book would be nice. I'll make that just for you. I'll make it myself. I'll raise the cow. I will. Uh, I'll definitely get it because I, I, I keep it on my nightstand. I think it's just so fun to read. Who's it, it good for? Tell, tell, tell your audience who it's, who's it good for, do you think? And don't be cute. I, I think it's, it's all coming from a good place. And... Uh, People who are, have gotten open minded about things. I was just reading this one, Get New Socks. I'm like, yeah, we should always get new socks. I like get that. Get new socks, get a new sponge, buy yeah. nicer toilet paper. There are some that are really just literally that simple. Some of them come out of my own experience. You know what? I know you don't do this, but uh, you know what? Never plunge your glass into the ice chest or the ice machine to fill your glass with ice. Now, that's one of those things where you're, I can almost promise you, somebody's either like, what? Why would I do that? Or what? Why wouldn't I do that? And that's the point. I was a busboy. And I know my boss would lose his goddamn mind if I ever plunged anything glass into the ice machine. Because if an ice, if a glass breaks in the ice machine, we are screwed for the rest of the night. We now, we now not only have one broken glass, we also have no ice. Yeah. Because every piece of ice in that machine is potential that's, glass. Yeah. Title. Yeah. Well, who needed to hear that? You know what? Everybody needed to hear that because there's plenty of ways to get ice out without plunging your glass in. That's just a little example of that. My friend Dan Dukovic saying you are your options. I think about that all the time. There's just the stuff where you're like, these are little ways to like reboot your perception of the world and try to become a more wholesome and kind person. Yeah. And some of these are really thought provoking. Uh, oh, here's one. one. Sometimes, sometimes people ask you how you're doing when they're especially concerned about how they're doing. So true. So true. Are you in a web browser right now? Yeah. Let me, I'd like you to read, you in particular, I'd like you to read one of my 
favorites. Please Google for the string. Um, what you're looking for is little versions. Little version. And the line starts with your, your kids. Please read that. All right. Your kids are not the little versions of you. They are little versions of themselves. So don't be sad or alarmed whenever they are becoming something different from you because they will become lots of things that are different from you. And that's arguably the point. It's inarguably a thing that you need to cheerfully celebrate and support. Very nice. Because don't you sometimes need to be reminded of that? Yeah. My kid's not allowed to be not me. Well, you're there to get out of the way and write checks and sometimes know when to buy ice cream. If you have trouble, some of it's very practical. Some of it's extremely practical. Some of it's like straight out of project management stuff, like like stuff you know, which is like if, if you think your client isn't fully appreciating the scope of the project, <laughs> double your bid. Uh, or, or, you know, it, it, when you're ways to like, here's one, David, here's one that's straight out of your wheelhouse. Um, learn to be, and this, I think this one's almost like a koan where somebody reads this and goes, Pfft. but like, think about this, learn to become the kind of person like first learn, learn this about busy people is that they, they don't, they don't, they have you there to do stuff, not to keep bugging them. Learn to ask, especially in email, but in life, learn to, if you need to communicate with someone, really sit with this. Please consider trying to become the sort of person who learns to ask a busy person a question that can easily be answered with the single word, yes. So you think you're good at this, right? You think you're like, well, I need to go, uh, hello, I hope this email finds you well. It sure is great being your employee. I was just wondering if the Q2 reports were, pfft, pfft, pfft. no, yeah. how about this? I just realized that Rosemary um, and the East Coast team is coming in on Friday. I figured I'd get the whale room and donuts from Wise Sons. Is that cool? Yeah. Now, if you don't need permission, why did you even ask? Which also gets to another one of these, which is like, if you want to help somebody, don't ask them how to help. Just do something helpful. Bring them a lasagna. If somebody died, they don't need a job managing their friend's kindness. They need to go do stuff. If you can learn to ask, that's so... David, be honest, right? Isn't that the kind of thing that you spent, I spent most of my life completely not realizing? I thought it made me seem smart and thorough to write six paragraph emails where the third to the last sentence is the only thing I really needed to say. Yeah. We're, and, we're and, all and guilty. I, yeah. And you, but you just say that you learn to ask questions that can be answered with yes. You're like, oh, but what if the answer is no? Well, you know what? That's fine. They understand email and they know you just, you just clarified. So you made something, took something very clear and ask a question that could be answered with yes. And if they don't want to answer yes, you know what they're going to do? They'll answer with something other than yes, but you made it as easy as you could. This is stuff I needed to learn. This gets back to what we said earlier. Writing it down makes it more real. And uh, maybe uh, this is something uh, I need to write a few of these down. This one here, people think about you much less than you either hope or fear. So true. Uh, some of these are, at least in my head, somewhat controversial. Give me a cut. What's a controversial one? Okay, um, real quick. A controversial one I love. Um, like it or not, every day, everyone is doing the best that they can. How is that controversial? Well, well, <laughs> have you never been yelled at on the internet about something yeah, that yeah, not only true. wasn't your fault, but didn't happen? Have you ever, has there ever been some kind of a weird Dust, dust up and you say, oh, do better or be an ally or whatever. And it's like, well, here's the, and like, well, then get ready for me to crush your soul. Cause there's a part two. Part one is whether you like it or not. I don't know what I said, but something like whether you like it or not, every day, everybody's doing the best that they can. Well, yeah, but you could have done better. You know, guess what? You didn't. You did what you did. So that definitely, definitionally was the best that you could and did do. If you can do better tomorrow, that's fine, but stop consoling yourself with the idea. Quite the opposite of the original feeling of that. I'm not trying to say it's okay that everybody sucks and doesn't try hard. Quite the opposite. I'm saying stop consoling yourself with the idea that you keep telling yourself you did your best. You probably didn't do your best. 
you probably did whatever we all do to get through the day because that's what we all do. And we all we cover ourselves with glory about all the good and ask the world to constantly applaud all the decisions that we've made in life. And we're so thirsty, sweaty, needy out there begging everybody to approve of us. And we end up living in this, in this bizarre emotional kabuki where nothing is really anything and yet everything is everything. You can't talk about this without talking about that. And like, pump the brakes, everybody. Like, be the person that you want to be. Stop looking for lessons in the place where it's convenient and start accepting the lessons from the places where they were found. Do you think that that like indulgent self-image that you're talking about is partly because of social media? Absolutely. I mean, not totally, but yes, uh, it's absolutely part of it. On Dubai Friday, Alex and I, this is not a felicitous phrase, but we call it the chicken problem. And the chicken problem is like, I am so scared to talk about my life. I'm scared to admit a vulnerability. I'm scared to, let's go with an easy one. I'm scared to apologize because it makes me look weak. And that the reason and the, we call it the chicken problem because you feel chicken about being yourself. And there's reasons to be chicken. Let's, let's be honest. But the, the, the thing that happens though, and I, again, I know it's, it's, it's fashionable to overquote Orwell, but in, in, in his famous novel set in the future, Winston Smith doesn't even know whether the telescreen is on because it doesn't matter what it's a panopticon as Foucault would call it. Right. I, you don't, once you start censoring yourself, you don't need big brother anymore. And once you start listening to make believe angry voices in your own head and regulating your and editing your behavior as a result, you've lost. And like, it doesn't mean that you, you know, have to commit fully to being a certain way, but it does mean like, am, am I doing the thing I think that I'm doing? Or am I mostly trying to av avoid some kind of fantasy pain because I'm afraid of becoming myself? And like, talk about being a parent, the best thing you can do for yourself and the rest of the world is to give everybody ample room to become themselves, including yourself. Merlin, I, I love the stuff you do. And uh, thank you so much for coming on today. Thanks to our sponsors, 1Password, Text Expander, Indeed, and Tailscale. We are the Mac Power Users. You can find us at relay.fm slash MPU. Where can we find you, Merlin? Well, I generally don't care, except that I finally got a good domain name, David. Oh, you know okay. how nice it is to get a good domain name? So, for example, the Wisdom Project uh, lives at wisdom.limo because that's a great TLD. Um, and, and based on a line that made me laugh very loud in the old TV show, I, Claudius, I also now have the domain name unwilling.horse. Okay. <laughs> and that's a home base where you can find the stuff that I do. And, uh, and now I'm on Mastodon and having a wonderful time on Mastodon. I have a very, very long name with several ats in it, but don't follow me because I, uh, sometimes I talk a lot about the band The Eagles. <laughs> all right well thanks a lot merlin for coming on uh for uh, more power users the ad free extend version of the show merlin i can talk some 3d printing and otherwise have a great day everybody <laughs> <laughs>